Good evening. Welcome to the Township of Abington's Board of Commissioners meeting for December 14th, 2017. And may we have a roll call, please? Here. 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 Be advised, Commissioner Bowman is excused. Would everyone please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? Vice Commissioner Gillespie is here. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to call on District Honorable District Justice Juanita Price. Is she here? Yeah. For the swearing in. Chief Living Good, would you like to comment first? Yes, I would. Thank you, Mr. President. Tonight we will ceremonially swear in our newest police sergeant, Joe Bly. And this is part of the plan that we've discussed with you many times. Um, this is the next step in this. It's been well thought out, well planned, and Joe is well deserving of this promotion. I'd like to tell you a little bit about Joe Bly. He resides in Willow Grove. He's a veteran of the Marine Corps, served four years there in the infantry. He was deployed twice to Iraq served as a team leader and a squad leader. He's awarded the Purple Heart and the Navy and Marine Corps Achievement Medal. Uh, Joe's been with us for seven years in Abington. He's a member of the patrol division. He's also a member of the tactical unit. That he's a DARE instructor, a field training officer, a firearms instructor, and in his spare time, he serves as president of Abington Township Police Association, which is the bargaining unit. Joe graduated from the University of Pennsylvania in May of 2017 with a Bachelor of Arts in Science, Political Science, cum laude. Wow. Uh, Joe is here with his wife tonight, Jackie, and his children, Elizabeth and Clara. And after Judge Price swears in Joe, I will have his, ask his wife to pin on the badge. So Judge, if you would step forward, please. Step up, Joe. Raise your right hand, please. Mm -hmm. I please state your name. I, Joseph Bly. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support, obey, and defend. That I will support, obey, and defend. The Constitution and the laws. The Constitution and the laws. Of the United States. Of the United States. The Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. The Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And the Township of Abington. And the Township of Abington. That I will faithfully discharge. That I will faithfully discharge. The duties of my office. The duties of my office. As a sergeant for Abington Township. As a sergeant for Abington Township. And I will obey the rules and regulations. And I will obey the rules and regulations. <coughs> policies and procedures. Policies and procedures. Governing sworn members of the Abington Township Police Department. Governing sworn members of the Abington Township Police Department. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Joe, would you like to say a few words? Indeed I would, Chief. Thank you. Uh, good evening to everybody. Uh, what I have to say tonight is really just a long list of thank yous uh, to a whole bunch of people to whom I owe a great deal. First to the commissioners, thank you for placing your trust in me. To Chief Livingood, Deputy Chief Smalloy, Deputy Chief Warner, thank you for placing your trust in me. It means a great deal. Uh, to all, all of the lieutenants and sergeants I've had over the years who have guided me and uh, offered me a lot of support, uh, I owe them a ton and a lot of thanks. Um, to my FTOs, uh, Tom Scott, Sean Gargan, and Ray Townsend, who laid the foundation and taught me what it means to be a good cop. To all my colleagues, my peers, uh, with whom I've worked for the past seven years, I've taken something from everybody, and uh, it, it's meant a lot to me. Um, 
Mostly, though, uh, I'll self-reserve my deepest gratitude for my family, right, nationally, of course. Uh, my wife, Jackie, my daughter, Elizabeth, my daughter, Clara, and my dad, Joe, all of whom are present here. Uh, you know, they, they put up with a lot uh, for me to pursue my goals, uh, a lot of sacrifice and a lot of patience. So I sure do owe them a lot, too. Uh, in sum, I owe a whole lot to a whole lot of people, <laughs> and, that, and that, that is not lost on me. Uh, I look forward to this new opportunity, serving, uh, serving my colleagues in the Abington Township Police Department, serving the citizens of Abington Township in the greatest police department I can imagine working for, and I hope to live up to the uh, high expectations that this position uh, deserves. So thank you. Okay, Joe, did you want to stay, you and your family, and guest, or did you want to have us take a five-minute recess and you guys go down to uh, the reception that they're going to have for you? I'll defer to the Chief of Police Commissioner. <laughs> He's already oh, had enough. Five-minute recess? We want to stay for the next Yeah, we'll stay. Oh, okay. We'll stay. <laughs> Thank you. It does. All right, at this time, I'd like to call on Commissioner Tom Farron, who has a couple of uh, presentations to make. It'll come back to us. Good evening, everybody. President Luker, fellow commissioners, tonight is the kind of night that makes me proud and excited to be a commissioner in Ward 12. We have a, a number of citations and commendations to give tonight. Uh, for some of the great people that we get to live with in our community every day. We're going to start with two Girl Scouts who did some great work over at Briarbush. We have uh, plaques being made up, but they're being sent over to the Girl Scouts, but I wanted to invite them here tonight so we could read into the public record and have them recognized for the good work. So we're going to start with Orrin Allen and ask her to come up. I didn't realize as I was preparing this that Orrin is actually in my Spanish class at Chestnut Hill College uh, until I made the phone call to her, to the mom, and, I, and we went up talking to her in class that day, uh, and I'm ha very happy to say she has, and I'm, I think it's all teaching, she might say it's all her, she has the highest average in the class, so I'm very excited to say that too. So Orrin, a proud community salutes you in attaining the Girl Scout Gold Award, the highest award in Girl Scouting. In achieving this honor, you have earned assorted awards which attest to your leadership qualities and your contribution to our community. Your completed project resulted in refurbishing a preschool play area known as the Discovery Den at Briarbush Nature Center. Warren's goal was to create a safe, inviting, and interactive play area for the children and families who visit the Briarbush Nature Center Discovery Den. This will benefit the community for many years. We appreciate all of your hard work and join the Girl Scouts of Eastern Pennsylvania, your family, friends, and community leaders in extending our congratulations to you on this milestone. Congratulations. Sure, I just wanted to say thank you, especially to Julie Still, Girl Scout leader over there for who pretty much helped me through this entire project and I'm really glad to have been able to help Briarbush with this and it's been a great experience, so thank you. Our next Girl Scout is still at college, but her mom is here, so we're gonna embarrass her and bring her up here. So you can share this with your daughter when she gets home or show her the video. A proud community salutes Grace Campbell, on, attending the, on achieve, attaining the Girl Scout Gold Award, the highest award in Girl Scouting. In achieving this honor, she has earned, earned assorted awards which attest to her leadership qualities and her contribution to our community. Her completed project resulted in improving the preschool reading hollow at Briarbush Nature Center to ensure more kids have the opportunity to read and learn about nature, as well as engage in imaginative play through nature-based games. Much like the other project, this will benefit the community for many years. We appreciate all of her hard work and join the East Girl Scouts of Eastern Pennsylvania, her family, friends, and community leaders in extending our congratulations to her and to you as her mother on, on behalf of the township. Thank you so much. Grace is sorry she can't be here. She's at school studying for a calculus final tomorrow, so please keep her in your thoughts and prayers. <laughs> Thank you. Now I'd like to invite uh, Dave Turner to come up. We're going to recognize the Just Fight Foundation. 
Um, Commissioner DiPlacido is down here with me as well, not just being a nice guy and holding the plaques, but the two of us are fortunate enough to serve on the board of the Just Fight Foundation. And we have Brad coming up, Brad Turner coming up as well. And Amy O'Brien, sorry, I was looking right past. <laughs> and Amy O'Brien. Um, these are fellow board members on the Just Fight Foundation. You've heard me talk about the Just Fight Foundation at multiple meetings and the good work that they do in the community, and I wanted to make sure that we recognize that as a township. Since its inception, the Just Fight Foundation has carried on the wishes of the Turner family to give back to the Glenside and Abington communities in Allie Turner's name by carrying the message of Just Fight to children and families struggling through traumatic brain injury, by championing the education of life-saving CPR and emergency preparedness, and by preparing with the Red Cross to host blood drives. The Just Fight Foundation has been tireless in its efforts to support the community that has embraced the Turner family and to be a source of strength and optimism for others. The Just Fight Foundation embodies all the best aspects of our neighbors and our community, family, hope, courage, and the importance of loving and caring for each other. The proud community salutes the Just Fight Foundation board, the Turner family, the volunteers, and all the family, friends, and neighbors who continue to live out these qualities every day. The Abington Township Board of Commissioners joins our community in extending our congratulations to you. Thank you very much. I just wanted to say thank you um, on behalf of not just only the foundation, but the entire Turner family and McAdams family as a whole. Um, this community has really embraced our situation and has really helped us get through um, not just Brad, Bridget, Allie, and Liam, but also as an entire family as we've dealt with the situation over the last two years. A couple days from now will mark the uh, two-year anniversary of how the Just Fight Foundation came about. Um, at the lobby at CHOP, me, Brad, and Bridget all sat there and said, okay, Allie's going to live. This was two days after we, she was taken off of uh, life support. And um, we said, all right, well, how are we going to make this a good situation? How are we going to celebrate the positive? And more importantly, how do we recognize all the support that we've been given as a family and really show the community what we can do to give back? So we came up with uh, a couple things we were going to do, one of which was um, we were going to try and reach out to other families that are also in need and try and be a resource for them, not only financially, but also with a lot of support. Um, we also decided that CPR was going to be a major focus for us without, CP without Allie's parents knowing CPR, she would not be here with us today. That was step one. Step two was a machine that she was placed on for over a week um, that required a lot of blood. Um, and we said that we were going to support an effort in a campaign to promote regular blood donation. I'm happy to, to announce two years later, we've raised a lot of money through this, but more importantly, we've saved 786 lives so far with the donation of blood. Sorry, I'm shaking. I'm very nervous. I've never done this before. But I do um, also want to say that you know we've been able to um, you know really impact CPR training as well through a couple different programs that you know we have set up, and you know all of this that we've done and the resources for the families would not be possible without the support of 19038 in particular. You know they've been there. They've been supportive from day one. And I don't believe any of us would be where we're at without that support. So I want to just say thank you once again. And I want to thank you, Commissioner Farron, you, Commissioner <laughs> Jimmy DiPlacido, my buddy, um, Commissioner Zapone and Spiegelman, as well as uh, Commissioner Kalin Kalin Kalinowski. I'm sorry. Uh, the names I go by, Steve, John, Dennis, Tom, and Jimmy. So. Um, I really appreciate this award tonight, but it really goes um, to show how important this community has been and what the impact they've had, um, you know, to their own community through the story of Allison. Thank you. We're actually fortunate enough to have Allie with us tonight, so we're going to ask Brad, Bridget, Liam, and Allie to come on up to the podium. Hi, Allie. There you go. Good. 
So we wanted to recognize the Turners in particular. Obviously, each one of them in the past two years has been an example for the entire community. Right? We could look at each person up here and, and talk about their courage and their faith and their hopefulness and their strength, their commitment to each other, their commitment to family, and it's an inspiration, I think, for the neighborhood. And I wanted to make sure we recognize that formally at a, at a public meeting, and you have my appreciation personally, but I think from the township as well. Um, so this is for Allison Turner, Brad Bridget, and Liam Turner. Life changed for Allison Allie Turner on December 8, 2015, when she suffered a drowning accident in her bathtub. Through the CPR efforts of Brad and Bridget and the first responders, Allie's life was saved. While down at Children's Hospital of Philadelphia, Allie was placed on an ECMO machine and every day, Brad, Bridget, and her brother Liam would tell her to just fight. Allie's vivacious personality responded to that challenge and she has been fighting ever since. As her lungs have healed and her brain function continues to improve, Allie has become a symbol of hope for her family and for others. In particular, Allie's fight and Liam's fraternal love have inspired hundreds and thousands to never give up even in the face of life's largest test. The Abington Township Board of Commissioners salutes Allie, Liam, Brad, and Bridget Turner and commends them for their courage, their hope, and their steadfast resolve to celebrate life and always to just fight. Congratulations. So uh, thank you all. Um, honestly, a little over two years ago, we had no idea what was going on, what, what life was going was gonna to hand to us, and we certainly didn't think we'd be here a little over two years later. Um, so a lot of that goes to uh, my wife being CPR certified and ready to jump into action, um, helping to get her breathing before EMS got there. So the second alarmers, quick response came took it over, made sure our baby girl got where she had to get. Then the Abington Police Department, also great, world's greatest, I, I can tell you that. Um, walking us through the whole thing, making sure that we were comfortable, making sure that the situation was taken care of, just you know, focus on our daughter, and that's what we did. And from that point on, Abington as a township, and, and, and beyond, but this township, Abington, just they came together, put a big wall around us, anything we needed, anything. So every single person in this room and in all of this township, we would love to say thank you and give you a big hug. It's almost impossible, but stop us and we will, right? Um, everybody in this township deserves it. Uh, one, of the one, one of the big things that we want to say as far as um, Allie and, and her recovery is uh, the children of Abington. They have all been so phenomenal. I, I can't, and, and you, you'll attest to that, and, and Liam, he's the number one supporter of her, he's, uh, and he sees it. Um, the kids are just so great around her, you know? She, the wheelchair doesn't matter, that, and that comes from the parents of Abington. So again, we're back to, this is like the world's greatest community. It really is. Um, and we can't say any more, but thank you, and God bless. I'm going to ask Denise Flack to come up as well. We have a presentation we want to give to the Kevin from Heaven Foundation. Um, and coming up with a couple other people. I didn't know the Flacks when I moved into Glenside, but my, my older brother did, and I'd heard stories of them. Uh, I was from Longcrest, and, and some of the Flacks are from Alney. And if you know anything about Alney and Longcrest, you know that there's a long history there. So the name has resonated. Um, my dad actually knew, I think, Dan's mom uh, back in the 50s and 60s, back from Logan, Alney, and Longcrest. Uh, and over the past couple of years, as I've come to know the family, every story I'd heard about them was true. It's it just a great, big, loving family. And I wanted to acknowledge the work they've done in the past couple of years in the community. It's been, um, it's been altering in many, many ways, in, in so many positive ways for so many people. Uh, and not to speak for Just Fight, but I think in the beginning, one of the first groups that reached out was the Kevin from Heaven Foundation to Just Fight. And I think, again, that speaks to the great part of our community where we support each other and, and, and everything we do. So this is a certificate of commendation for the Kevin from Heaven Foundation. Inspired by the life and personality of Kevin Thomas Flack, the Kevin from Heaven Foundation was originally formed in 2010 to support the Flack family. 
From local beginnings in Glenside, the Kevin from Heaven Foundation has grown to become a critical resource, providing emotional and financial aid to assist families who struggle with traumatic, life-changing events. Through its activities, such as the Keep the Faith 5K, Kevin's Coats, and Service in Good Faith, the Foundation supports the education, health, and well-being of families in need, work core to its mission. Through Kevin's gifts, the Foundation provides direct assistance to families in financial need. Over the years, thousands of people have benefited from the Foundation's efforts, thousands of people. Most importantly, the Kevin from Heaven Foundation carries on the legacy of Kevin Thomas Flack, a child with beautiful dimples and a gentle soul, a shy personality that was fiercely competitive, a loving son, brother, and friend to all. The Abington Township Board of Commissioners joins a proud community and salutes the Kevin from Heaven Foundation, the Flack family, the volunteers, and all the family, friends, and neighbors who, who find comfort in Kevin's own words and continue to keep the faith. Congratulations. Um, my name is Chris Campoli. I am Dan Flack's sister, Denise's sister-in-law, my brother Tom Flack, and our dear friend Mark Palmero. Um, who actually was one of the originators in the foundation. Uh, my brother Dan couldn't be here tonight. He's very own business. So we he are here to support um, Denise and Dan. And thank you for your past support and I'm sure your continued support in the future. What we do, uh, we'd like to think, makes a huge difference in our community. And we'll continue to do everything that we can uh, to keep Kevin's name on the front page. Keep the faith. Thanks for everything. Have a great Christmas. Commissioner Farron, Commissioner DiPosito, very good. Thank you very much. Uh, Chief Livingood, Chief Malloy, yep. Chief yep. Kelly Warner, yep. recess? Okay. Yep. Right. Nathan, would like to take a two minute recess? Thank you. I just, I'm not thick right now. She's got yeah. some beautiful yeah. hair. You know how Facebook is? I just want a picture of him and Mark from here. Mike, could you shut the door, please? Oh, wow. My son had that for a while. Nate, we good? Yeah. Okay. All right, at this time, we'll continue with our agenda, and I'll call on Vice President Stephen Klein for approval of the minutes. Thank you, President Luker. Luker, I'd like to make a motion to approve the board meeting minutes for our meeting from November 9th, 2017, and I so move. Second. Second. To move to second, comments from commissioners or staff. Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion carries. Mm -hmm. so at this time, we come to our public comments on agenda items uh, for the public. Uh, I might just mention that uh, we have some issues uh, or items coming up later in the uh, agenda. One specifically, High Top. If you were going to comment on High Top or Presby Homes, I ask that you hold off because we're going to allow you to speak yeah, yeah. when those agenda items come up later on in the evening. So at this time, I'll open the floor up to public comments on agenda items. If you would state your name and address for the record and please adhere to our three minute speaking rule. Thank you. Laura Lehman, 1431 Bryant Lane. Um, so uh, to, to be clear, for High Top, during the agenda item, people who are interested can come up and talk, and also yes, Presby Inspired Homes. Right. OK. I, I believe High Top should be pulled from this agenda, which I wrote to all of you, because I'm nobody sorry. had any of the information in their hands. So that's different than talking about it at this time. I think it should be pulled because nothing was done until yesterday and nobody has that information. And it hasn't been vetted at all. It shouldn't be here at this meeting. So um, the, the other thing I'd like to ask, um, I wrote to all of you, I wonder if any of you has an apology for the things that I wrote about. Mr. Spiegelman's frowning. He was one of the prime characters in there. Perhaps he didn't bother to read it. Ms. Lehman, Probably not to, me. Yeah. So, to me. Thank um, you. I would like to ask if any of the members of the board have an apology, both to me and to the other residents, that they've done the same thing to after reading what I wrote to you. So anybody? Any acknowledgement, so just keep moving. Apparently not. Okay. Correct. All right. A, a complete disgrace, okay, to take words and turn them around so in in that 
particular case, for instance, Commissioner Spiegelman completely misrepresented, uh, and he should have known what was in the budget. Uh, if he didn't know, it means he didn't read the budget. I, I think he was purposely misrepresenting. Ms. Myers, Commissioner Myers also, completely misrepresented what I said. And this is a pattern and a habit, and most of you at some time have done it, and you've also done it, as I put in my letter, to other residents. It's slander. It's intended to demean the character of the resident that's speaking so that the people listening won't believe what they're saying. And it's also meant to obfuscate and to cover up some very bad dealings that are going on in this township. And, uh, you know, tops among them what happened at the colonnade that isn't over yet. And I would like to see, at the very least, that the people here understand what they've done and learn how to make an apology and move forward in a different manner because it's not acceptable. Thank, Thank you for your comments. <clears throat> Any other comments from the public? With the exception of those who want to speak on high time President, or Presby President, President Luker. I'm sorry, Commissioner Myers. Uh, is this an appropriate time for me to respond? No. No, I, why don't we just keep moving, if you don't mind. Thank you. Uh, any other comments from the public? <laughs> any other comments from the public? With respect to the agenda? Any? On, on agenda items, right. With the exception of High Top or Presby Homes, we're going to allow the public to speak on those items when they come up. Okay? All right, hearing none, we'll move on to Public Works and call on Commissioner Tom Hecker. Thank you, President Luker. The Public Works Committee has two items of business this evening. The first is PW1, and this is a motion to adopt resolution number 17-032, reapproving and reauthorizing the township manager to sign all documents pertaining to the Greenlight Go grant specific to the intersection of Fitzwater Town Road and North Hills Avenue, Woodland Road, and I so move. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any comments from commissioners, from staff? Commissioner Myers. Thank you. Um, well, while this was stated at the committee meeting, I, I feel that it needs to be repeated just in case anyone is under the impression this particular grant, and I understand the name can be confusing, the Green Light Go grant, um, in no way is attached or associated um, with the red light camera system that we have in the township. It is a completely separate grant and funding. Any other comments from commissioners? <laughs> Any from staff? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. Thank you. And PW2 is a motion to authorize the sale of township property as listed in the agenda, and I so move. Second. The motion is moved and seconded. Any comments from commissioners? From staff? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. And that concludes our business. Okay. Thank you, Thank President Wicker. Right. Thank you, Commissioner Hacker. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to call on Commissioner Ben Sanchez, Commi Commissioner Ben Sanchez, Director of Code Enforcement and Land Development. Thank you, Mr. President. We have several items this evening, starting with CE1. This is to consider the request for consideration of t a text amendment by High Top Real Estate Group. And I will turn it back to you, Mr. President. Okay, thank you, Commissioner Sanchez. At this time, I'd like to call on Commissioner Tom Hecker as the Ward Commissioner <coughs> and ask his opinion on this matter. Uh, thank you, President Luker. If you will, I think uh, this would be an appropriate time to open up for public comment on the matter. Okay. Uh, as I stated previously, uh, on the comments by the public, this would be an opportunity for any of those in the public who want to speak on this agenda item, a request for consideration of text amendment by Hilltop Real Estate Group. Anyone from the public? Come to the, hold on please. Yeah, can I just mention one thing? Go ahead, sir. I, I just want to make sure it's clear, if any consideration here is only about to advertise for an ordinance. Right. We're not looking to pass any ordinance tonight. It's only about advertising for an ordinance, so. Advertise for an ordinance, right. 
Okay, name and address in three minutes, please. Yeah, Speaking. I don't want to make my comments now. I, I believe that you completely changed what High Top is doing. Nothing has been presented before. I may be the only person that address. got the, the information because I heard Commissioner Hecker say there had been new information and I hadn't seen it. You so I pushed, I asked for it in email, I didn't get it, and then today I called the manager and asked to get it. Mark Penical finally sent it to me. I don't think anybody even knows what there is before, so I think you should have your presentation first. And I, as I said, this should be pulled from the agenda. There should be no action, and, and while you're saying it's only being advertised, advertised means these people have lost the chance to hear from the presentations and so on that were given, they were completely different than what you're proposing now. And, and this is just completely inappropriate. It should be pulled. If you're not gonna pull it, at the very least, have your discussion so people can hear it and then ask for their comments. That's what we're attempting to do. Will you Thank do you that? for your comments. Well, will you do that? I didn't want that to be my comments. I wanted my comments to come after I hear it. Okay, please be seated, Ms. Flamer. We have comments from the public. We, hold on. Yeah. So I'm asking, yeah. will you have comments after we hear what it is you're planning? Let's, 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 let's let this play out. We're going to ask for some legal advice as we go along. Yes along. or no? <laughs> well, it's a no. Sit please sit no. down. The, the, the board is asking for public comment now, and right. members of the public can comment on whether or not the board should advertise this. This is not a, a, a hearing on the proposed text amendment. This is whether or not the board should advertise for a hearing at a subsequent date. So Ms. Okay. Lehman has had her comments. She has told you she doesn't want you to advertise. Whether they can should I, advertise yes. this, no, what I'm proceed, or speaking engagement, it says that you make a comment and then you sit down and wait for it. Okay, so my three, if you're, if you're making these my comments, then I want my full three minutes. But this, is, this should not be my comments. My, I'm asking you please to present so my comments can be informed comments. Well, let's let the residents of the ward speak and let's hear what they have to say. Okay. Commissioner Klein. Yeah, I just think there's a, there's a semblance of clarification that needs to occur. So uh, I'll wait for the speaker to sit down. Okay, so I, I don't want you, you're going to do something about this Mr. Clark said, we don't know what the this it's is a yet. It hasn't text been, amendment. Yes, but it hasn't it. been available to the public, and that's never done. Ms. Layman, please, that's sit never down. never done please, that it down. comes before okay, a meeting thank you. before it's available. Okay, any residents from the ward want to come up and speak? But, but just, wait, wait, just so there's no confusion because yeah. of the, the speaker's misrepresentation, all of you have the proposed text amendment. All of you have a redlined and a clean version of the proposed text amendment. All of you have various letters from the Montgomery County uh, Planning Commission, and all of you have a very uh, detailed memo uh, from my office to all of you outlining uh, the, the issues, uh, presenting the timeline of, of when uh, this application was made and also incorporating the comments from staff and from the Montgomery County Planning Commission. So the idea that you don't have anything in front of you is just patently false. You have a significant amount of information in front of you. Okay. Commissioner Klein. I, I think there's something missing in here. Um, Solicitor Clark, the, the way this operation works, from my understanding in the years that I've been here, once we have, we can have all of these documentations, the proposed ordinance, any kind of letters, any kind of meetings that have, or any kind of letters that have been drafted by the Planning Commission of Montgomery County, all of that becomes public once we decide to advertise the, the ordinance. Correct. Until then, it is still a draft and it's not public, it's not considered a public document at, yet, at that point yet. Correct. Until, until we decide to advertise it. Right, correct. Until you take action, and the action would be advertising it, all of these documents that you would be basing your decision on, other than my memo, which never becomes a public document, um, or then they become right. Uh, they become public records and can be uh, obtained through a right to know request. And then once, if we, if this board was to decide to advertise the text amendment, 
at that point then if there is a plan uh, abington township planning commission meeting which i know they've gone there once but no no action was taken they would go back to the planning commission on any revisions that have been taken any revisions that are incorporated in the text amendment and go through that full public process all those meetings would be advertised correct all those meetings including the public meetings that would come before this board if it, if it was to go to a text amendment hearing that's when the the, the for us to make that motion to have it a text amendment is when all of that stuff becomes public. Correct. That's all we're doing tonight if, if, if we would decide to it, go with the text Deciding amendment. whether or not to advertise it for a public hearing. I just wanted decide. to clarify that because I think there's some misunderstanding right. as to what we're doing here right. tonight. Is that something Thank you. Ms. Lehman, you're out of order, please. Uh, the young lady who raised her hand, did you want to come? As, oh, I'm sorry, yes. I just come to the podium, state your name and address for the record, please. <clears throat> Elizabeth Glom Lathbury, 1649 Ferndale Avenue. We live behind the properties that are proposed for the um, development. And should we do our comments before or after they present? You can present? do it now, and if there's questions, we'll-, we'll Now is okay, yeah. okay. Um, so for the record, we feel very supported by Commissioner Hecker. We've had a couple of meetings with the people in the neighborhood that this will directly affect um, as well as Commissioner Klein was there one time and Mr. Spiegelman. Um, so we feel supported in that regard. And I thank you for that, for calling us and, and having that meeting, as well as for you for attempting to address some of the concerns that we had. Um, so this is a, a block of property behind us. Um, originally, they wanted to build 64 unit apartment building. It has since, I believe, been knocked down to 28. Um, my understanding is that according to the new zoning uh, legislature that's gone through, the, what's, what's approved is four units. So four and 28 are quite different. Um, as residents, we're wondering why a project would be considered um, that seven times the density of what's just been approved and I know that you all worked very hard um, on that piece of uh, it legislature law. I don't. Anyway, you worked very hard on that. So um, for it to go back on that so quickly seems like it would undermine your hard work. Um, we were under the impression before that the Amco property was under contract um, by High Top. And then since then, we've learned that maybe it wasn't, or it can't be, or there are environmental concerns, and the AMCO property was a solution to a parking concern that we had. Um, let's see. Um, I mean, we have confidence that the commissioners are more concerned with the community and the people, the residents who live in the neighborhood, as opposed to the bottom line of the developers, because if we're being honest, that's what the big concern is um, for you guys. No offense. It's just what it is. Um, but we are opposed to the development um, in its current status. You know, we'd be happy. We are fully supportive of, of revitalizing the 611 corridor. You know, right now it's a mess um, since we have lived there. So we've been there for 10 years. And the properties behind us have been in a pretty much constant state of disrepair um, and or abandoned. So, and it's owned by the same people who currently want to develop this property. So for somebody to disregard their property for 10 years and then all of a sudden be promising all these fancy things to go in, we have a hard time believing that their promises will be kept. Um, and additionally, we have some concerns about parking and adding, you know, 60 to 100 new people to our block. Um, we already have problems with businesses that are behind us that have connecting cut through uh, driveways. So, you know, I feel like there's going to be a lot more problems coming your way and, and requests that we as residents would have about shutting off those cut-throughs or adding additional stop signs, um, I think. Is that everything I had? Okay. <laughs> I'll pass it on to my husband. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Womack. Any other comments from residents? Sir, name and address for the record, and please adhere to our three-minute speaking rule. <clears throat> my name is Scott Copperthwaite. I'm also at 1649 Ferdinand Avenue. I live directly behind the property. 
Um, I apologize for my attire. I was at home with my daughter sick today, so I didn't have my work clothes on. So I just want to apologize. It's better. Um, as my wife said, uh, that's my wife Elizabeth, uh, we in the community don't agree with this project or think it's feasible. Um, I know that there was a meeting on October 24th earlier this year where our commissioner, Tom Heckert, wasn't there, but it was uh, communicated that we were in favor of this project, but we haven't seen the new, we didn't see the newer project at that point. We had meetings last year. Um, we were just completely opposed to it at that point. We had offered suggestions, but we're still opposed to this project. Um, a couple things I want to add that uh, weren't covered by my wife. Um, we already have drainage issues with that property. That property directly drains into our backyard. I've talked to Tim Clark about this previously about a year or two ago. We already have drainage issues. I wonder what will happen when we put this larger unit in that I believe with the tax amendment actually has less buffer zone between our property and their property. So there's concerns with that. Um, also, I believe this property is meant for students. This is meant to be uh, student housing for primarily <coughs> Penn State students. Uh, we're a small community. We have young children in our community. Ourselves have young children. Um, we wonder what will happen when you turn that type of property into late nights with students compared to a property that will have be a commerce property where you know it closes at 10 o'clock or at 11 o'clock at night. Students don't stop. You know they're up all night long. I was a student. You all were students. We sent, we stay up late. You know if you're going to put 60, 70, 80 students within that small property. That's going to affect us and everyone in our area. And I think that should be a, a major concern. Um, the off-street parking is a problem. We already have problems with parking from all the businesses by us. We don't have a, we don't have a driveway at our house. So we will be directly impact impacted by this. Our whole community will be impacted by this. We already have a ton of foot traffic coming through between 611 and, and uh, Rockwell. We're, we're a very small street. And this by adding 60 people, 70 people, 80 people, you, this will just constrict us more and more. We have a lot of small children in our neighborhood now. My wife already talked about the issues we are having with speeders coming through. We've, we've talked to the police about this. By adding this many people into such a small area, this will only make things worse for us. Um, 611, as you know, is already has issues with traffic. We hear, your, we hear everything that comes out of Lee's Hoagie Shack. There's accidents all the time that happen there. By increasing the amount of traffic that's going to go in there, with this many people is going to cause problems one way or another. And I think that should be examined before we actually agree to these terms. Um, the other things I'll mention is that this property is huge. The height on this is something comparable to Abington Hospital. Do we really want that in the, our area? There will be balconies overlooking my backyard and my neighbor's backyard. I, I don't think any of you would want balconies with kids, with college kids, overlooking your backyard. So please consider that because we don't want that. Um, just a couple other things. I think we really need to understand how many tenants will actually be living in this unit because I don't think that's been addressed and we actually know how many people are going to be there. Um, and then just a couple other things. Uh, the other piece to this is that there are other communities that are impacted as well by this text amendment that don't have the ability to speak like we do. We've seen this proposal multiple times. We've talked to our commissioner about it. I don't believe the other uh, people of this township have had the ability to talk to their commissioners about how they will be impacted by this uh, text amendment. And I believe that's a huge concern, not for just for us, but for having everyone in Abington, because I don't think they've seen this. And if you make this change, you're not only impacting us, but you're impacting everyone else in the township. And I think that's a huge concern. Without everyone actually knowing how they're going to be impacted, I think this should be really just scratched. Uh, as my wife said, we're, we're very reasonable people. We're willing to talk about what could possibly be go in there. But this is unreasonable. 60, 70, 80 people in that small property space is not reasonable for any of us. And I think it should be scratch at this point, should go back to the drawing board and see how else we can, what else can be done with that property to help 611 and, and our area in general. Thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Scott. Any other comments from residents in the area? Name and address and please adhere to our three minute speaking rule. Name and address for the record, please. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Mildred Yard, 1646 Ferndale Avenue. Uh, my husband Earl and I have been living on Ferndale Avenue since 1984. Uh, from us moving um, on Ferndale Avenue, we like the diversity of the neighborhood where we are. Um, as different people move out, different people move in. And it's very solid, very, very much so. Uh, we've already heard from Scott and Elizabeth um, about the children that are growing up. You've heard already about the speeding vehicles that are coming through time after time. 
We can see with this project, if we allow this project to happen in our neighborhood, there's going to be more speeders. Uh, we have not yet found a way to solve this situation now. Um, even as early as yesterday, as I were coming from work, um, this, this, there's a four, I think it's Hamilton and Ferndale. Mm -hmm. the, stop, the stop sign to me is very confusing. Now it sounds as if to me that, okay, you can go, you can do this or you can do that. It does not say um, stop and you stop. It has some wording on there that no one, I don't believe, is taking the time to read it. If they are, we don't understand it. Hmm. Or we're reading it, but we don't understand what we're reading. Hmm. That's what I really think it is. Um, and we can see where if the project goes through with as many other people in our area as have been spoken of right now, we're going to have much, much more of a problem. Much, much more. And we know that on one street over, just recently, we had a young child to be killed on that street. Much has been done, which is appreciated by my husband and myself, I know, and I'm sure many other people that are there. We don't want things of this nature for us to have to come back here one day and say, well, I remember in 19, um, whatever, 2017, 2017, we talked about this or that or the other. But we are in agreement with our neighbors who have already spoken. We do not agree with the project. And there are many other reasons that we don't agree uh, with the project, but because Scott and Elizabeth has given to me such a good foundation of things that we do not agree with, then I will, my husband and I will say, we agree with our neighbors. Thank you. Thank you very much. A lot of hard work by your commissioner has been done uh, in, the, in years previous, so I, I commend him for that. Uh, yes, another resident wants to speak? Thank you, ma'am, for your comments. Raymond Bell, 2076 Parkview Avenue. At least the heat's on. Um, anyway, I'm, I'm opposed to, to, to this proposal and, and building uh, because, you know, I, I moved to Abington 35 years ago because of the character of the neighborhoods. And out of sight, out of mind, it doesn't matter. If you're going to put buildings on Old York Road, and we're going to have a continuous high rise, four story, or what have you. It makes no sense to me. And while the study that was done uh, was, was good, I think we, be, we should begin to start studying how to cut expenses in this township instead of building apartments that have no, it's going to tax the school district, it's going to tax the uh, uh, Communication. I've seen no studies, for example, of emissions, carbon dioxide, toxicity that, that can, can happen. Um, I might be late in the game, but those who seek high rise along the old year corridor, um, I, I don't agree with. Um, and I'm, I'm hoping that we can look to other ways. Uh, of helping to improve this community. But we're spending money. That's what we're doing. We're spending money, and then we're going to put apartments, and that's going to be the answer to Abington. Abington's not going to exist anymore. It's going to be a high-rise area. And, and I'm opposed to it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bell. Any other comments from residents? Comments from residents on this application for this consideration for requests for a text amendment. If there are no other comments, I'd like to defer to council for um, which is your suggestion on how we move forward on this. Um, well, first of all, uh, President Luker. Take a few comments on behalf of the applicant? Or well, well I, I, think, uh, I think it would be appropriate if the board right. wants Excuse to me. ask the applicant, right. um, uh, council, any, any questions that they're present. I think they have some of their professionals here. And the, uh, the developer is also here, as you'll recall, back in November, um, we did have a presentation from uh, the applicant. So I think it would be appropriate if the board has any questions for the applicant to, um, to ask them. Uh, but what I would like to do, President Luker, if I could, um, 
uh, just again to give the board a little bit of a, a brief uh, timeline on uh, this uh, proposal and also uh, just kind of point out some of the concerns that have been raised uh, by uh, township staff, uh, the Montgomery County Planning Commission, and uh, my office. Uh, the developer uh, submitted a draft text amendment uh, on or about October 5th of this year to uh, Mark Penical. On October 6th of this year, Mr. Penical contacted the developer's council, uh, raising several questions, requesting clarification regarding the properties affected by the zoning amendment and a plan that would permit calculation of coverage, setbacks, and other dimensional limitations. Uh, following a discussion with Council for the Developers, the Solicitor's Office provided a red line draft of the proposed amendment with revisions on October 24th of this year. One substan substantive comment concerned the provo proposed provision allowing the Board of Commissioners to waive zoning requirements, and this provision remains in the draft that is in front of you this evening. The Montgomery County Planning Commission provided written preliminary comments on the draft ordinance on October 23rd of this year, raising several concerns, including the proposed density. The township staff and the Montgomery County Planning Commission staff met with the developer's representatives and council on November 16th of this year, uh, following submission by the developer of a revised draft ordinance, and this was prepared in response to the Montgomery County Planning Commission's comments. At the November 16th uh, meeting uh, township with township staff and the Montgomery County Planning Commission, we provided comments on the revised draft and recommendations on the re re revisions to the draft. The Montgomery County Planning Commission issued its formal comments on the draft ordinance on November 22nd uh, of this year, recommending that the township not enact the, the ordinance as proposed. Subsequently, uh, on or about the same date as the Montgomery County Planning Commission formal comments, the developer submitted a newly revised draft responding to the comments provided at the November 16th uh, meeting. On December 12th of this year, the Montgomery County Planning Commission uh, staff provided informal comments on the latest draft ordinance, reiterating the concerns about the density and other issues. Uh, the most significant concerns, uh, commissioners from the Montgomery County Planning Commission, uh, from township staff and from my office, one is the proposed, pr proposed provision of the draft zoning amendment, which authorizes the Board of Commissioners to waive zoning provisions. As you are aware, um, any variance from provisions of the zoning ordinance must be approved by the Zoning Hearing Board, and despite the fact that we have raised this concern, and despite the fact that it has been tweaked on several occasions, um, the provision still remains uh, in the draft. Uh, the Montgomery County Planning Commission and Township staff have expressed concern that the density as revised uh, increases to 61 dwelling in units per acre, or 35 units per acre without any bonuses and this is six times the current allowable density. The bonuses related to off-site parking should be contingent if the board is going to consider this, or this is a concern, I should say. It should be contingent upon a, upon a firm commitment between the developer and the property owner uh, for the additional parking, which there has not been any uh, commitment that we have been made aware of. And finally, again, the provision authorizing waiving of the zoning provisions is problematic given the Zoning Hearing Board uh, jurisdiction in this regard. Um, President Luker, with respect to how uh, this matter should proceed, I think that it would be uh, appropriate uh, that if there is a, a motion, uh, or first, if any one of the commissioners would like any clarification uh, from uh, the developer, uh, his counsel, or anyone else, any of his other professionals who are here uh, this evening, that would be appropriate now to have those clarifications. Although I will state, I think we're, what I said last month, we're not conducting the hearing right now. We're conduct, this is just a decision as to whether or not we're gonna advertise uh, for the ordinance at a subsequent date. Uh, if there are no questions, there should uh, be a, uh, a motion either to advertise this for a subsequent date or a motion to uh, not advertise it for a subsequent date, or since this is a uh, discretionary uh, 
item for the board that there uh, that this is within your legislative function to whether or not to consider this text amendment if the board wants to take no action that is also uh, entirely appropriate so one of those three things should occur after the board decides whether or not they have any questions of the applicant's attorney thank you sir I believe the applicant uh, raised their hand um, counsel for the applicant Name and address for the record, please. Hi. Uh, good evening. Deborah Shulsky here with the firm of Riley Viper, Holland College Greco on behalf of the applicant. Thank you for the board's uh, indulgence this evening. Um, as Commissioner Klein uh, mentioned early on, really the limited purpose tonight was strictly for the commissioners to consider whether to advertise for the hearing. And then at the time of the hearing, a lot of the items that the neighbors had raised and some of the items that um, your solicitor had raised would be addressed at that time as well as the applicant and we had a full presentation that I believe some of you have saw and have been uh, discussed at uh, various prior other committee meetings and we can address a, a number of items such as the density and those types of things and then it, it, during the hearing when all the formal testimony and evidence and exhibits are entered then the board could make a decision whether to adopt or not adopt the ordinance that's being proposed so tonight was really we thought in our minds was for the board to authorize the hearing and, and then to put on the formal testimony and, and support or not support and the board consider at that time. So by proceeding with doing that, the board in no way is, is affirming that they are going to be adopting the ordinance, but just considering further all the information. And while the official um, request for the zoning amendment was submitted in October, this process has started much earlier than that. This has been about a two-year process where the applicant has been working with the township, with um, the commissioners, and we really appreciate all the effort that Commissioner Hecker has provided through this process in coordinating us with the neighbors. And we have met with the neighbors. We were a little surprised by some of the comments tonight because we thought that we came far away from some of the original meetings, and we did reduce the density considerably based on the concerns with the neighbors, and we also provided increased buffering and a number of other items that we thought were addressing their concerns. So we are we're a little taken aback by some of those comments. But again, this, this isn't something that just started two months ago. This has been in, in the works for two years plus. We've been meeting with uh, various other commissioners, with township staff. We've um, been before the Planning Commission, the Economic Committee, uh, the Land Development Committee, and at that meeting they actually had recommended that it be authorized for hearing. And then again, through the actual hearing, that was when you would listen to all the, our testimony as well as any of the public comment and then make a decision at that time. So we would respectfully request that the commissioners at least proceed with advertising for the hearing and allowing us to provide, I mean, we're, we have information tonight, we're happy to answer any questions that you have, but I do think it's more appropriate yet to be including that during the course of the hearing. I mean, we have, we've reviewed your comprehensive plan, we've reviewed your old York road study, and we believe that the tax amendment is consistent with the height and with uh, the suggested density based on the York, old York road study. It's not the okay, thank so you. if we're happy to answer any questions, as I mentioned. Um, Okay, Council, this would be questions from commissioners. If, if any commissioners okay. have any questions for the applicant, it would be entirely appropriate at this point in time. Again, not so much on, if you want to find out a little bit more about the plan, but this isn't the actual hearing. That would only come if the board decides to, to advertise this for a hearing. And again, I just would like to point out to all of you something that, that all of you know, because you've been sitting on this board for, some of you, for very long. Um, when the, the committee makes a recommendation, uh, to move something to the full board, that is simply what it is. It's merely a recommendation. It does not require the board to follow that, that recommendation. So the fact that the Code Enforcement and Land Development Committee uh, voted to recommend that it go onto the agenda for consideration for advertising it for a public hearing um, obviously does not mean that the board has to follow that. Comments or questions from commissioners? Commissioner Klein. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, President Luker. So, I mean, I have, my comments primarily come from my experience working on the zoning ordinance that we passed in April or May of this year. Remember the date. I should remember the date. Um, so, um, being one of the people that was in, um, that 
shepherd that process through for seven or eight years or whatever it seemed like decades um, anyhow my my concern has been and I, I listened to it at the Planning Commission meeting the Abington Township Planning Commission meeting uh, the the proposed ordinance I'm not sure why we would consider it because it is so far out of the conversations that our zoning ordinance committee had during the drafting of the zoning ordinance um, we carefully considered the northern section of Old York Road, um, like maybe a couple other sections of, the, of Abington, because those areas were of major concern, they were of need of help, and there were, they took a long period of time of conversation during our zoning ordinance, and we came to the density requirements, we came to the setbacks requirements, we came back to all the things related to the northern section of Old York Road purposefully because of what it was and what the infrastructure was. Um, the density is, we talked about the density at length and to see the density being proposed in this ordinance is far and above anything even in our larger commercial properties it's about larger the bonus requirement system has no resemblance to any bonus system that's in the zoning ordinance i'm not sure where that came from but why not be it's not even close to being anything in the zoning ordinance that we have now and then the contrived qualifiers that we have in this ordinance they either do one of two things they either cause a larger expanse of potential development along the lines of what the zoning ordinance puts together, or it, it creates some type of spot zoning issue because it eliminates so many different properties. I'm not sure which one because we haven't gone into that, but I, I find either, either, av, either, either end of that argument to be um, problematic. And um, we also, I mean, I had conversations with our planner from Montgomery County Planning Commission where we did our own mapping to try to figure out which properties would be incorporated in the qualifiers now that's the original um, qualifiers of being uh, I think it was 25 whatever it was from a bus stop and a half a mile from a from a train station um, and you know if you look at assemblage, there's a whole lot of properties that start to fall into this prop, it, it fall into this, the potential use of this ordinance. Um, I just can't wrap my head around why this or why you would go down the lines of drafting an ordinance that would be so far and above what anything was ever considered. And you could talk about the timelines. I was involved, I was um, one of the people involved in the Old York Road Corridor study. And yes, that is sitting out there. However, the Old York Road Corridor study came out of a larger plan, and then the, the implementation of that Old York Road Corridor study, its natural progression was to see how the zoning ordinance was changed. And that went through another review process, which is how we got to what we, the requirements we have on the northern. I, I just, this is, it, this is not even small tweaks to the MSH district. It's not even small tweaks to the H1, H1 um, to the H1 use group. It's, it's a whole different ballgame. And, if this was, if we were dealing with an ordinance from 1996, I'd say, okay, maybe we need to rethink the whole thing, but that's not the case. We just passed our new ordinance in April or May of this year. So I, I don't know how you answer that. I mean, that's my concern about this. I mean, I think, well, starting with some of your concerns about the other properties, we have done a, a, a very thorough investigation of that, and we do have a, a report that summarizes all that information, and, and we don't believe that it constitutes spot zoning or that it opens it up to too many properties. Um, so we could present that information tonight, or again, we were planning on doing that uh, if you proceeded with the hearing and making that part of all the other exhibits and documentation that we would provide at that time. Okay, any other questions of the applicant? Commissioner Hecker. Yeah, thank you. Um, so I want to make a few comments. Um, so we at the committee meeting in October, it is true that the committee recommended for this to move forward. And what I said at the time when I was asked was, what is my commitment? And my commitment was for this to receive an appropriate review. And I've been saying that from the get-go, which is why there have been uh, continued community meetings with the neighbors and with the developer seeking to find a place, if we could get to a place where this was a workable project for both entities. And at the time of the committee meeting, what we didn't have in hand was the additional data from the Montgomery County Planning Commission. And so my concern, although I've been working with the neighbors and with the developer to get to a place 
of something that would work for both parties is this would be the first time in my time on the board that we would be recommending going forward with something that the Montgomery County Planning Commission is telling us we shouldn't do. And that, I think, is an uncomfortable place for us to be. I'm not saying we should shut down the conversation completely. I think we need to think about what other opportunities there are. But I'm not comfortable, uh, as the commissioner of the ward, recommending to my colleagues that we would move forward on an action when the people that we rely on for advice and counsel are telling us it's problematic. And so while I respect the idea that we could make a motion to advertise and we would have a month's worth of time to work this out, that sort of removes the leverage of the board to shape this in a way that we can all live with and feel good about. And, and that's my concern. So I think there's more discussion to be had here uh, based on what we've heard from our solicitor and what we've heard from the Montgomery County Planning Commission. And I would just, I mean, I, I didn't exactly read that letter the way you did. They did, I, they did have some concerns with the density, but they also supported some other aspects of it. They did the support some of the changes re redevelopment that of it. So the, there's a paragraph in there that says the Montgomery County Planning Commission does not recommend moving forward with this ordinance as it's constructed. I, I'm, one of the maybe I don't have that draft thing because okay. that's not in the draft that I'm so, I mean, look, the bottom line so, is I'm as interested as the developer and the neighbors and the board members here to develop this property and revitalize the old York Road corridor. But we've got to do it in a way that makes sense. And it feels like tonight we're being asked to do something when there's a lot of data in front of us to suggest that the mechanism that's being proposed isn't the way we should go here. And again, I'm not saying no. I'm saying I don't want, to, I don't want us to move to a place where our leverage is reduced to construct something that will benefit the township. And that's where I'm at. Thank you, Commissioner Hecker. Any other comments? Commissioner Myers. Thank you. Um, Mr. Solicitor, you, you said that we had three options. One was to pass it, one was to vote against it, and the third was to pass it with, no, or without, not pass it. What, what is the wording that you it's, used? It's a, it's a quirk in what the applicant is asking us to do. Um, when an applicant wants to develop a property, they have a right under the municipality's planning code to be heard and have a decision rendered within a certain period of time. When an applicant is asking you to make an amendment to your zoning code, and your, the drafting of your zoning code is a purely legislative act that you're all empowered with, and the decision to, um, uh, to uh, amend your zoning code is within your sound discretion, so you can either approve it, deny it, or take no action. Um, I will tell you, I mentioned this to Mr. Manfredi, um, I still have a file in my office from one of my other municipalities where a, a developer submitted a text amendment, proposed text amendment like five years ago, and we've, the township has never done anything with it. It's just sat there. They've never taken any action. So the three options you really have this evening are you can deny their request for a hearing, you can approve their request for a hearing, or you can just move on to the next agenda item under, and under those circumstances, they don't get, they don't get a hearing. It would have the same effect as denying uh, their request for a hearing. If we formally take no action, uh, does the applicant have an opportunity later to come back with revisions, having heard everything said tonight, can they come back with uh, a slightly adjusted plan? Um, could more neighborhood meetings and com commissioner um, sponsored neighborhood meetings take place? It doesn't kill it. It doesn't kill it. And even if you vote to deny it, to not have a hearing, it doesn't kill it. They can keep, they can keep coming back and they can keep making the request and they can keep submitting revisions and at some point the board may say, yep, this one looks pretty good so we're going to move forward with this. So making a, a motion tonight to deny their request or taking no action does not completely foreclose their ability to come back at, at a later date uh, with a revised plan or with the same plan and hope to can convince you at that time if they want. But, uh, but I would think, and, and I pass this along to our board, I would think by taking a no vote as opposed to taking no action, uh, doing a no vote, that that ref reflects something on the record that maybe um, doesn't help doesn't help the neighbors or the developer. 
taking no action um, as a result of the conversation tonight. No. And I'm sure that, I mean, this is not the area, the area that I'm an expert in. I'm not speaking for anybody else. But um, personally, I don't feel that I know enough. And um, I'm, I'm certainly not saying kill it, but it seems that more work needs to be done. Commissioner Collins, are you finished, yes. Commissioner Myers? Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'm sorry, I'm finished, yes. Commissioner Collins. I, I think listening to Commissioner Hecker and Commissioner Klein here, I think that no action is the direction they would like us to go in, correct? Um, I, I'm okay with either course of action. Um, well, you want to keep the line of communication open. Yeah. We want to keep that development, possibly that land going. So a course of no action right now, I think, is my personal opinion where we should go. Okay, any other Pacific comments? It's not my own. But questions from commissioners? So I guess the question then, if you take no action, you don't ask for a motion to take no action. You, you, you no ask action. for, you, Commissioner, uh, President Luker, you can ask for a motion right now and hearing none, we move on to agenda item number two. Could I just make one last comment? And, and, I, and I, I actually would appreciate a no action as well. I appreciate that suggestion. And we are happy to continue to work with the commissioners and the township and the staff. I know a lot of effort is put in already. But if we could get some feedback on the density, because from our perspective, I mean, the, the applicant has put a considerable amount of time and effort and resources and money into this. and. That is the minimum amount of density that he needs to make this project viable on this particular property. So if at the end of the day there is a, a big concern from your perspective that's not going to work, I don't want him to drop another I respect that. I mean, significant amount of money into the engineering. He's had an architect and, and civil engineer on board for the last two years that he's been paying. I'm probably the cheaper of the expense. So. but. Um, so, you know, uh, and, and we do appreciate all your comments, and we, and we do want to continue to work with you, but again, that's something that Enough. I'm going to have to tell them after this meeting that if, if, if this isn't going to work, you might as well just pull out because it's not going to be a viable project for you. You bring up a good point. President Luger, um, yes, if, if I can interrupt, I apologize. Uh, Ms. Sholsky is a, uh, a very good lawyer and a zealous advocate for her client. And while if I were in her shoes, I would be asking the same thing. Um, since I'm not in her shoes and since I'm sitting over here, I'm going to recommend that we don't uh, give that, that feedback um, at, at this point in time. I think that the uh, township staff uh, in the form of uh, Mr. Manfredi and Mr. Penical and the Montgomery County Planning Commission in the form of Mr. Narkowicz, who is here this evening, um, have given significant feedback to the applicant. Um, I think my office has also about some of the legal issues regarding the text amendment. I don't think, and, and again, with all due respect to Ms. Shulsky, I don't think it's a surprise to anyone that the big issue is the density, the size, the height, um, and that is what the concerns the Montgomery County uh, Planning Commission had, and that is, I think, the concern that we've heard from the residents, and that is the concerns that the staff had. Um, in, in addition, I, I think that there are the concerns that Commissioner um, um, uh, Klein had indicated was that this is either, this could have a, a, a big impact on many other properties on the Old York Road corridor. So one of the things the Planning Commission has recommended is that this may need to go back for the, the, uh, the Old York Road corridor study to see how this would all fit in. I would say this to the, the, uh, the applicant uh, and her attorney. Staff, the Planning Commission, my office, Mr. Manfredi's office will continue to work and meet with them. And, um, but I think they have a, a fair amount of feedback right now on the, on the problems with this. And I would recommend against any of the 15 or 14 of you uh, giving, giving that feedback from here. I don't want to give the impression if, if one of the commissioners says, well, I want to see this, that that means they do this, they're going to get approval next time. I think it's a more, it's a, it's a different process and, and a, attempting to help them design their project is not really what the, the 14 of you should be doing. With all due respect again to Ms. Shulsky, who is working very hard on behalf of her client. So. Did you have any more comments, ma'am? I do not. Okay, I, I guess my uh, conclusion on all this is the commissioner, the planning commission, the residents, the township staff, it seems like it's very 
problematic and there are a number of concerns here. So I, I guess my recommendation is that we take no action, move to the next agenda item. I, I think it'd be appropriate, uh, President Luca, to ask for a motion, one a motion one way or the other. And then hearing none, then we just then, move on. Okay. Okay. The floor is open. What motion? I'll make a motion. No. I can't. I no, can't. if there's no motion, we simply move on to the next agenda item. Okay. There is no, if there is no motion, then we just move on to the next agenda item. Okay. Thank you, Mr. President. Next, we have CE2. This is a motion to approve the reverse subdivision and land development plan submitted by Philadelphia Presbytery Homes for the Rydal Water Track made up of Rydal Way, Noble Circle, and Harbison Way, zoned within the Senior Neighborhood Residential District of Ward 7, and I so move. Second. The mood and second it. Any comments from commissioners? Yeah, I'll have it during staff. Hear me none. All those in favor? Aye. Oh, oh. We, we did. You are absolutely correct. Yeah, but that was for the public hearing. Right. That's hold on. We're not we you haven't reached that point yet. So you have we have two parts of it. Right. So two parts. <laughs> We're going to do it for the uh, text amendment. Right. Okay. Yeah, just do it. All right. All right. We'll open it for public comments on both both motions then that are listed on the agenda. Can you can that? open it for public comment on both motions, but you have to approve the reverse subdivision before you can move on to the text amendment. So you can't take them as two okay. motions together. So you can take public comment on both, but. You have to approve the reverse subdivision before you move on to the text amendment. Gotcha. Okay. So I, I suggest that we open the uh, text amendment up for public hearing. No, 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 no. No, it's simply you're going to take public comment on CE2 and CE3 together. Okay, all right. Who's on first? Comments are for both. Okay, so. Comments are for both. Comments are for both? CE2 and CE3. Okay. Um, so we don't get uh, three minutes for each one. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Cleverly done, as usual. <laughs> okay. So, uh, it, again, in, in this particular case, we have the same thing. We had um, a drip, drip, drip of changes that was initial, what was initially approved and presented is nothing like what's coming before you now. So one of the major things that was an issue back in the beginning uh, when the rooms were filled with people protesting was the fact that, um, that we, in, in Abington, we are moving towards more and more non-owner occupied properties. And that's what this is doing. This is this text, this is reverse subdivision is taking owner occupied, I believe, and taking it back to non-owner occupied. Am I correct? So, so in, in essence, what you have is homeowners who are vested in their properties versus renters who are not, and the main power lies with the corporate authority, who is paid to come to our meetings and talk to our commissioners and talk to our managers and our solicitors to make the changes that they want to make. And we are moving in that direction all across this township, and it's a bad way to go. So I'm opposed to this. The residents who initially came out and protested, were opposed to the non-owner occupied, and they were much more pleased to know that these were occupied, owner-occupied units, okay? Secondly, as far as the text amendment goes, developers have no business telling us what we, we should be doing with our, it's all in their interest, as you just saw with the other one that was here, all in their interest, that's what they want. In terms of the, the steep slope, it should be evaluated again. Not if you got it once and now you have a brand new project, it, you get it again, okay? That's not good. 
The residents who came out in droves to talk about this talked about what the age should be, and the senior age was 62, not, not 55. So how are we letting developers come in and tell us what we should do when you held meeting after meeting and your residents already told you? Okay, so not okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Mr. President. Just would like to add, if there's no other comments, I've... No, I, apparently there are no other comments. Okay, Commissioner Sanchez. I mean, just for the board's edification, I just wanted to clear up that what the speaker talked about is sort of ancient history in all this process. Uh, Presbytery Homes, aka Rydal Park, has met with the neighbors throughout the entire time of this project. I think it's a testament that no other neighbors are here complaining. They worked with them to satisfy all of their needs and concerns and it is uh, you know a project like this I mean I don't know where the assertions about not owner occupied I mean these are high-end homes where people have an ownership interest in them they are also maintained by Rydal Park so this is a great project the density is within well within what was conceived of this project, conceived all along. They, all along this was intended to fit into the existing zoning that had been hashed out over time, fits in well with that, and really reflects you know, the investment back expectations over time. Now, there has been some history, market downturns with this, but this is a, the project <coughs> that was probably envisioned from the start and is here now and really looks great and will be a fine addition uh, in senior living. Not a burden on the school district, a boon to our, uh, our, our taxes, and uh, really will help keep some of our seniors that uh, need a little more help in living within the township. And uh, I would, I wholeheartedly support it and hope uh, the commissioner and other commissioners will as well. Thank you. No, Ms. Lehman, you wrote, you wrote. That's what my letter was Lehman, about. Mrs. Lehman, you're out of order. Out of order. But my letter was about you allowing Lehman, false information. Ms. Lehman, you're out of please order. Sit please sit down. Please sit down, man. That you're was false order. information Ms. that Lehman, he put out. Ms. Lehman, you're out of order. Please sit down. And it, and it denigrates Lehman, my integrity, and it should be corrected, please and you down. have the ability to do please that. Please sit down. Thank you. Any other comments? Yes, ma'am. Name and address for the record. Um, my name is Nancy Lara. I live at 1248 Huntington Road, and um, I didn't come here today to speak with respect to the Rydal Park uh, agenda. However, hearing this, um, I would like to just say that my um, father, who is now deceased, was a resident in Rydal Park, and I he have seen how the um, community at Rydal Park in helps to um, increase the uh, independence of the residents. Um, they do an amazing job. And I think, in my personal opinion, if you're going to uh, improve Rydal Park and to incorporate more seniors so they can have independent living, that their families can not have to drive 45, 50 minutes to see them, then I think it's an amazing thing. So if you are proposing to um, take Rydal Park and make it um, more of a community setting for these adults, rather than living in a uh, institutionalized setting, then I'm all for that because there's nothing greater, in my opinion, than having a loved one who is unable to live at home, but yet live in a apartment type setting. And I don't know all of the um, details with respect to this. From what I'm hearing, I would strongly support this. And I live in, within Rydal Park's uh, distance. Um, growing up, when I would drive up Susquehanna Road, I always thought that they were apartments. And as a young girl, I thought, well, I want to live there. I never knew what they were until, you know, later. Um, it's very well kept. It's um, it's close to Whole Foods. It's cl like everything is there, and there's nothing more than I would support than having seniors and older adults have more independence. Um, and that's all I really have to say. I didn't come to comment on this, but that. Are my thoughts. So thank you.
Thank you. Any other comments from residents? Hearing none. Uh, Commissioner may I, if, if, if I may, um, uh, just I'll, I'll try to try to keep this brief. You know what that means. Um, the, these past two, these actually, these past two issues, uh, as as different as they are, both both high, uh, high top and and Presby uh, Presby homes, as different as they are, um, I, I want to point out having having been to the, the neighborhood meetings uh, for for both of them, particularly the latter, um, this has actually been a model. Uh, both of these situations have been a model for how commissioners uh, should and do uh, interact with residents uh, when, a, when there's a, a development that's proposed. Um, but, you know, both Commissioner Hecker and Commissioner Sanchez should be commended um, for the way in which they've, uh, they've run all the, this entire series, series of meetings. With regard to this proposal, uh, Presby Homes, um, the, the speaker prior to Ms. Lara and prior to Commissioner Sanchez, there was a significant amount of, of misinformation. Um, so I really just want to reiterate what, uh, what Commissioner Sanchez said, uh, th that what was said with regard to the, the Rattle Waters proposal by that speaker was absolutely inaccurate. Um, and uh, and having, having been with Commissioner Sanchez through so many of these meetings, um, I also support this. Uh, I also support uh, actually both, both of the proposals. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments? Okay, uh, Council, hearing none, I can officially close. No, we, no? Need, we, need, to, uh, we need to approve the reverse subdivision CE2 um, uh, first, and then we can just move into CE3. So Thanks. there's okay. a motion. Do we have a motion and a second to approve CE2? Yes. So we just call the vote. All, all those CE2. in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passes. Now we open up the hearing for CE3. And we'll open a hearing for CE3, which is a to consider a zoning text amendment by Philadelphia Pres Presbytery Homes. Motion to approve the zoning text amendment by Philadelphia Presbytery Homes. And I so move, I'll open it up for comments from commissioners, staff, and residents. We already did, took those, okay. So hearing none, um, we'll Close the hearing. Close the hearing then. The motion has been read, so motion to close the hearing. Got to ask Ben to read the motion. Ben? I would move that to approve the zoning text amendment by Philadelphia Presbytery Homes at CE3. Second. second. It's been moved and seconded. Any comments? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, the motion passes. I thank everyone. And we move on to CE4. This is a motion to authorize advertisement of ordinance number 2150, amending chapter 162, zoning at article 21, use regulations, and the use matrix appendants, repealing and replacing article 28, <laughs> wireless communications, and repealing ordinance number 1793 and 1800, and I so move. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any comments from commissioners? Any from staff? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. Mr. President, that concludes the business of the Code Enforcement and Land Development Committee for this evening. Thank you, sir. At this time, Commissioner Lori Schreiber, Chair of the Public Safety Committee. Thank you, President Luker. Our first agenda item is a motion to adopt ordinance number 2149, amending chapter 156, vehicles and traffic, article two, traffic regulations, section 14, stop intersections, article three, parking regulations, section 25, parking prohibited at all times, no parking between signs, no parking here to corner, parking prohibited except certain hours, no stopping or standing. Ordinance number 2149 will establish the following. Stop sign on Tally Ho Road South at Meadowbrook Road. No parking anytime on the south side of Meadow, at Meadow, I'm sorry, Maplewood Avenue from Davisville Road to Fairview Avenue. No parking here to corner on the south side of Maplewood Avenue. The intersection of Fairview Avenue extending 30 feet east no parking Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. on the south side of Maple, Maplewood Avenue, 30 feet east of the intersection of 1800 block of Fairview Avenue, 
to the driveway of 2232 Maplewood Avenue, ordinance number 2149 will repeal the following. Prohibited parking on the north side of, of Maplewood Avenue from Fairview Avenue East to the dead end. Prohibited parking on the south side of Maplewood Avenue from Fairview Avenue to the railroad property, and I so move. Second. second. We'll move to second. <laughs> <laughs> it's removed to second. Any comments from commissioners or staff? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, the motion passes. Thank you, and thank you for not making me read it over again. Right. Okay. P um, PS3 is a motion to adopt ordinance number 2143, creating tax incentives for members of the Abington Township Fire Department and Montgomery County Second Alarmers. And I so move. Second. Second. I move the second and comments from commissioners or staff. <coughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, the motion passes. PS4 is a motion to adopt resolution 17034, a resolution of Abington Township, County of Montgomery, Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, establishing annual requirements for the certification of active volunteer service, and I so move. Second. Okay. It's been moved and seconded. Any comments from commissioners, staff? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, the motion passes. MPS 5 is a motion to approve the memorandum of understanding setting for the compensation of Township of Abington crossing guards for the fiscal year 2018 and 2019 and authorize the Township manager to execute said memorandum of understanding and I so move. Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any comments from commissioners? <laughs> Commissioner? I just had one question. Quiet. And I didn't ask that. I forgive, forgive me because I didn't ask this at the uh, committee meetings. I, the change in the um, compensation, has that been figured in the 2018 budget? Yes. <coughs> Chief Livergood has figured that in. What's that? The Chief has figured the increase in. Okay, great. Thank you. Commissioner Heckler. Yeah, not, not a question, but a comment. I wanted to uh, let everyone know that the crossing guards this evening are being represented by Dorothy Kalkbrenner, who um, I believe is the uh, longest serving uh, crossing guard at present with nearly 40 years of service. Dorothy and her husband, Bill, who is the former township engineer, are, are my next door neighbors. So I'm delighted to have them here this evening. Any other comments from commissioners? <clears throat> Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, the motion passes. And that concludes our agenda this evening. Thank you, Commissioner Shriver. <laughs> okay. Oh, man. Get my picture. Motion is <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> Go. All right. Um, Mr. President, uh, the Public Affairs uh, Committee has two scheduled agenda items. There's also an additional item, um, that uh, late-breaking item, that uh, will need to be introduced after that I will get to. Um, the first item is PA1, which is a motion to adopt the Fair Housing Resolution number 17-033. The Township of Abington receives an annual allocation of Community Development Block Grant federal funds from the U.S. Department of Housing and Ur Urban Development. As a grantee of these federal funds, uh, the CDBG and home fu uh, grants funds, um, it is required by HUD to annually adopt a fair housing resolution, and I so move. Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any comments from commissioners, staff? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, the motion passes. Item PA2 is a motion to approve resolution number 17-035, closing out community uh, conservation partnership grant, partnership grant project, BRC-TAG-20-12. Second. Oh, and I so move. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Comments Thank from you commissioners or staff? Here we go. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed the motion. Trying passes. to drag the meeting on a little longer. Commissioner Hecker time. caught me thinking ahead. Um, Mr. President, the third item is, as I said, a late-breaking item. It pertains to something that the board are, are already authorized, which is the uh, the purchase of properties for the Old York Susquehanna project. Um, there, there is a, a motion regarding the the, the very time-sensitive purchase of one of these properties. Um, with your permission, I'm going to turn things over to council uh, to uh, elaborate. Um, thank you, Commissioner Spiegelman. Uh, the uh, 1106 Old York Road was put up for public auction. Uh, the township, at, in, in working with the RDA, uh, bid on the auction, actually was able to obtain uh, the property for um, less money than we originally had budgeted for this property. Uh, the auction company uh, forwarded the agreement of sale uh, to Jerry Nugent of the RDA 
uh, earlier this morning because there was a 4 p.m. deadline today for the agreement of sale to be signed uh, from the auction company. Uh, so Mr. Nugent executed the agreement. Uh, and once the agreement is signed by uh, the seller and the buyer, a, a deposit must be made within 48 hours. Um, so we need the board to uh, authorize uh, the payment um, uh, for 1106 Old York Road. And again, as I indicated, this all moved very quickly because we did this by way of auction and we're able to uh, get the property for less uh, than was originally listed. And if we, if Jerry Nugent didn't sign the agreement and if we don't place a deposit, then they move to the next uh, lowest bidder. So we don't want to, or, uh, we don't want to lose this, or the next highest bidder, and then we don't want to lose this property. What's the amount? So, uh, Mr. President, if I may, I will read the, uh, I'll read the motion for everyone's consideration. Please. This is a motion to approve the purchase of 1106 Old York Road through the online auction process, including payment of the earnest money deposit to the closing agent upon execution of the purchase and sale agreement by seller and agreement of the remaining purchase price and related closing costs in cooperation with the RDA, and I so move. Second. Second. Question, is there a price? Yeah. Uh, yes. The, the, you have the exact price? I believe it was 144 including the fees, but I'll have to... The, the original, the original uh, appraisal value at which we expected to purchase it is something in the vicinity of 190,000, and so we're, it, it's a little under 145 that we're actually purchasing. Yeah, the exact number. Okay. The exact question. number. Uh, we were the highest bidder at 141,000 dollars. There's a five percent fee to the auction company, so the total due, the total owed is 148, 148,050 dollars. I was asking, um, that's not the corner property. That's so no, this is the former end. Broderick construction property. Okay. It's, it's the, the northernmost of the yeah, right. properties. Uh, what's the earnest? What, what are Mr. The, Gillespie? Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> the earnest deposit. If I may, because I just popped the agreement open, it's $4,230. Very earnest. Okay, Very earnest and sincere. <laughs> um, uh, if, if I can, if I can comment, I mean, I, again, I apologize. I mean, it's this was just circumstantial that that this was as late breaking as it gets. But I, uh, I mean, I think everyone here is familiar with the uh, the Old York Susquehanna project, and this is a huge step forward. Um, so I would uh, urge my colleagues to to please strongly consider supporting this action. Okay. Any other questions? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Motion passes. Thank you very much, and this, that concludes the business of the Public Affairs Committee for 2017. Thank you, Commissioner Spears. This time I turn it over to Vice President Stephen Klein, Director of Finance. Thank you, President Luker, and, I, and I'd like to call on the Township Treasurer, Jay Blumenthal, for a brief report tonight. Thank you, Commissioner Klein. How brief do you want it? <laughs> it's in front of you. I'll take any questions. <laughs> How's that? Very good. Thank Next. you. <laughs> Thank you. FC1, motion to approve investments for the month of October as previously circulated to the board. It was noted that investments for the month totaled $735,000. Interest, interest rate yields were 1.25%, and I so move. Second. The move and a second and comments from commissioners, staff. Hearing okay, none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, the motion passes. FC2, motion to A, approve the October expenditures as previously circulated to the board in the amount of $5,048,516.19 in salary and wages, in the amount of $1,818,342.99, and B, authorize the proper officials to sign vouchers in payment of bills and contracts as they mature through the month of January 2018, <laughs> and I so move. Second. Been moved and seconded. Can we have a roll call, please? Yes. 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 Rothman? Yes. Myers? Yes. Brodsky? Yes. Schreiber? Yes. Bowman? Yes. Barron? Yes. Gillespie? Yes. Ecker? Yes. Kalinowski? Yes. 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 FC3, motion to approve the advance and travel expense activity for October 2017 as previously circulated to the board. The advance and travel expense reports are, were $0 and $2,422.38 respectively. 10 month expenses totaled $25,252.31 and I so move. Second. I move to second it. Comments from commissioners or staff? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, the motion passes. 
FC4, a motion to approve the clearing fund, the deferred revenue expense activity and petty cash balances for the month of October as previously circulated to the board. Clearing fund receipts and disbursements for the month of October 2017 were $845.31 and $2,234.34 respectively. Deferred revenue expense receipts and disbursements for the month of October 2017 were $40,000 and $93,349 respectively and I so move. Second. So moved and seconded comments from commissioners or staff. There are none. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passes. FC5, motion to authorize the budget transfers and supplemental appro appropriations going from fund balance to appropriate departmental personnel, service expense, cost objects for the fiscal year 2017, and I so move. Second. The move to second it. Comments from commissioners or staff? We have none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. <coughs> Commissioner, uh, President Luker, I'll transfer FC6 over to Commissioner uh, Hecker. Yes, uh, this is uh, FC6, and this is a motion to approve $100,000 from fund balance for legal fees, and I so move. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Comments from commissioners? Commissioner Klein. Commissioner Luker, I'll recuse myself from this vote. Thank you, sir. Any, Excuse any comments? Me. Um, Ms. Lehman, you're out of order, please. Is, Commissioners. Yes, the is she, just, no, this is not the forum. This needs to be stopped. There this are needs no to be comments stopped. from the public at this time. Thank you. This needs to be stopped. Comments from commissioners or staff? Hearing none, all those in favor? No, 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 no. Question. Commissioner Myers has okay. a question. Question. Oh, go ahead. I'm oh, sorry. Um, I, I think before this is passed, and um, I would certainly not vote against it, but would do so with reservation. Um, this is beginning to be a money pit, and we're always hearing about this after the money has been billed or invoiced or spent. Um, my first question is, where does this fit in the um, fund balance policy, and is there no money, I know we're in December, is there no money left in contingency that could cover a portion of this? No, there is not that it needs to come from fund balance. So our contingency balance is zero right now? There's none available for this is my understanding. Kevin. Good evening. Um, the contingency funds was only $100,000 for the beginning of the year. We approved two items through the year to take that money down to. I do not have the number in front of me right now. So there's not $100,000. I am hoping we do not need the whole $100,000. But at the time I took this to the Finance Committee, I estimated out the expenditures that were through the years, through the year at that time, and came up with that number, because I wanted to come up with a number and not have to come back in January or February saying I needed more. So I'm only going to transfer what's needed, not all, the whole $100,000. So the motion, if, if can be, would be up to and including $100,000 is what we would like to ask for. Uh, and if I understand you, this, this is to cover invoices that have come in. Correct. It'll, well, it's we'll to cover invoices for October, November, and December, which I do not have yet. I do not. I just received October's um, <coughs> two days ago, three days ago. Uh, November's will be coming in, and then obviously December's. So I looked at the expenditures from the year, and I came up with a number. Instead of trying to go fifty thousand and then have to come back in January and ask for another ten or twenty, so, so. You're, you anticipate that this amount will cover the bills that you have not gotten yet? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, I I don't know if if there's something that we could do or some or have some kind of plan or process that it is that we are being a little, that we are forced to be reactive. I mean, we, you, you pay your bills and if you don't have enough. Out of your operating to pay your bills, then you dip into your reserve. I understand that. But this just doesn't seem to ever be ending. And I, maybe my question is how much did we budget for next year for legal, legal fees? I don't have my budget book with me, but the same amount I budgeted for 2017, I budgeted for 2018. So we could very well be running into this exact situation. Correct. Depending on what is approved by the board, um, anything else that would come up that's outside the normal retainer would have to be approved by the board to come in. Well, I think, I think it would, I mean, we're certainly not going to do anything tonight, but I think it would behoove us 
to have some kind of policy for legal fees. I, I think this is not a good way to operate, to be taking 100,000 out of fund balance at the end, middle end of December to, to cover invoices that haven't come in yet. Uh, it, it's concerning. Commissioner Myers. Yes. If I may. Yes. Well, one of the suggestions I had made before, and I, I will be making it again in January, is that there is a very clear retainer with a very clear scope of what the attorneys to do under that retainer that any litigation before uh, the, the board approves any litigation any matter of litigation that the solicitor should project out the costs of every matter that's not covered under the retainer so then if there's a matter that you have to consider with that would come a, a projection of costs and then you can make a decision as to do we have the money in fund balance, do we have the money in contingency, so that you could do that on a case-by-case -case basis for anything outside of the retainer, and then not authorize the litigation or not authorize the expenditure. Uh, Manager Manfredi, I think that is exactly what I was asking for. Thank you. Commissioner Roth. With that said, I, I, don't, I don't disagree at all, but it's what I do for a living, and in all fairness, uh, litigation is a unique beast. Uh, you know, I deal with claims and counsel and their budgets, and sometimes they're way below, and sometimes they're way beyond. So as long as we have the lines of communication open, I think that's a great idea, but, uh, and, and I'm not, I haven't seen any of the invoices, so I'm not defending or condemning. I'm just saying that we as a board need to be aware that litigation is a very unique beast. Every claim is a unique beast. Uh, you know, claim and circumstance. Thanks. Any other comments from commissioners? Thank you, Kevin. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, so uh, any other comments from commissioners or staff? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, the motion passes. FC7, motion to authorize the president of the Board of Commissioners and the Township Manager to execute a three year agreement with Maley Falconeri. Falconero and Company for purposes of providing fire audit services for the year 2017 in the amount of $19,000, 2018 in the amount of $19,500, and 2019 in the amount of $20,000 funds to be drawn from the fire in lieu of taxes. I now so move. Second. So moved and seconded comments from commissioners, <clears throat> staff. Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. And that concludes the Finance Committee's agenda. Thank you, Commissioner Klein. In Commissioner Bowman's absence, would you take the Pension Committee agenda? Yes. Thank you, President Luker. Uh, pension 1, motion to set police pension contribution rate for 2018 at 5% of compensation, and I so move. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Comments from commissioners, staff? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. Pension 2, motion to adopt resolution number 17-031, revising and amending township's minimum municipal funding obligation for the calendar year 2018 with respect to the municipal defined contribution pension plan, which is amended from $27,687 to $53,486 due to an additional employees being hired since original resolution number 17-025 was adopted on September 14, 2017, and I so move. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any comments from commissioners? Comments from staff? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion passes. President Luker, that concludes the pension committee's agenda. Thank you, Vice President Klein. That concludes our formal agenda for this evening, so at this time I'll open the floor for comments from the public. Name and address and three minutes speaking. Um, yes, um, my name is Nancy Lara. I live at 1248 Huntington Road um, and I'm here today to speak about something that probably I would say I'm going to be the first to address this uh, issue. Um, my concern is that um, while I am in full favor of people celebrating the holidays and decorating, I have no issues or qualms about that. However, I seem to live next to a um, neighbor who is using um, lasers that are directly pointed um, at his home, which face my home. 
um, and shining into my house. Um, I'm not sure if the uh, board committee um, commissioners are aware that they are EPA um, guidelines, they are also um, FDA guidelines. And when I had uh, presented this to the uh, code uh, inspection or code office, um, my uh, feedback was how do I know that this is a laser? Well, laser stands for light amplification um, by the um, simulated uh, emission of radiation. And for me personally, um, I would like to start the discussion of um, some form of limitation as to how decorations can be displayed. I'm not against anyone displaying any type of decorations. However, when it is in clear vision of me and my home and my whole entire upstairs is illuminated, I have a son that has autism. I have a son that also has seizure disorders. Everyone knows that flashing, blinking lights and lasers produce seizures. My son has had a seizure since this uh, has occurred, and my son is not able to sleep in his own home. I uh, applied for a fence permit um, in which I'm not exactly quite sure um, it was tweaked a little bit. I was under the assumption that my zone um, was a 20-foot setback, but I was told it was um, a, a 15 kind of setback, so the fencing company said there's a little bit of, of tweaking to be um, involved. My concern is not only are these lasers and these blinking lights um, a health issue for myself, but it impacts the Drivers that drive up and down Huntington Road. As everyone knows, 611 is uh, under construction in Huntington Road. I call the 611 bypass, which is fine. I, I have no objection to that. Um, however, the uh, admission of um, the argon that's being admitted, argon, I'm not sure if you know, um, literally takes oxygen out of the air and is documented, will kill you. It's an environmental hazard. It's also flammable. Um, the uh, FDA um, also classifies laser hazards according for one through four, four being the, um, the most uh, hazardous. And the laser light show projector, excuse me, that is being displayed is classified as a four, um, meaning that is an imminent hazard and hazardous from exposures um, and direct reflection beams may also present a fire hazard. Um, and I'm reading directly from the FDA, um, their, their uh, website, which I can provide copies to. Um, you know, we've all have been taught with respect to presentations when um, we've all used lasers in, in, in college, et cetera, never point a laser at anyone. Um, Lasers aren't a toy. Um, there's actually uh, Chapter 21 CFR. There's uh, um, regulations against um, um, lasers. And my concern is that I'm <clears throat> concerned not only that I'm now not able to live in my home because I'm having lasers pointed at my home to the point where it's completely illuminated the health effects of my son and um, having a son with a disability, you will, will do anything to provide the safety. And when you have a neighbor that goes above and beyond to put lasers in the chimney gables um, on their home, I think it's extreme. I understand that Again, it's your right to decorate, but I respectfully ask the board that there is some sort of code guideline with respect to decorations. Um, I have 27 snowmen pointing at me, and I have pictures I can't even pull into my driveway. And I have blinking snowmen and lasers pointing at me, and my safety is at risk for backing out. Not only that, the safety of the people coming. 
Um, I included these all with my application um, for my, my fence because uh, at my son's neurologist recommendation was to get the fence to, you know, to block out. I wholeheartedly appreciate Mr. Penikow's, um one day turnaround um, with respect to uh, the approval um, of the fence and there, like I said, there were some minor uh, variations that, you know, that were made. I think I've spoken via message, email, et cetera, to my commissioner, um, Mr. Hecker, I, I don't know how many times, and he has been amazing in, in answering as many questions as he can about this. However, I've been told by code there is no, it does never come up. So I ask that maybe if we, as the board had a discussion with respect to um, the uh, uh, bamboo plants, that maybe we could have a ordinance with respect to lasers because they are um, illegal according to the FDA. Um, and I'm at a loss. Okay, ma'am. Well, thank you very much. We thank you for your we, time. Do we have uh, Nancy's? I, I didn't get your last name. No. L A R A. L A R A. Name and address. Okay. Yes, we we'll be contacting you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your time, and thank, thank you, you, Commissioner Heckner for Hecker for taking all of my calls. I, I I respectfully appreciate your your help. Thank you. You're welcome, Nancy. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much for your comments. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments from the public? Laura Lehman, 1431 Bryant Lane. I would think that probably something there can be done. That's, that's a shame. The, um, the documents that I was calling for in the back of the room were documents that I had asked Mr. Manfredi for. Um, I, I pointed out to Mr. Manfredi and several others who could provide them that many things that were relevant to this agenda were missing. There was no information on Briarbush in the, in the committee meeting packet. There was no information on the legal fees. There was no information on several things. And I asked for that cooperation. Rather than to be shut up, could you not cooperate with the residents and share what those legal fees were for? Mr. Manfredi knows that I asked politely for them, emailed for them, and then called today and reminded that I still hadn't had them. There should have been no need for me to call from the back of the room to get them. Documents are supposed to be in the agenda and the residents are supposed to have the same availability, and we worked very hard to have them posted so that we didn't have to come to the township and go through a half an hour of somebody trying to figure out what we needed. So please, can we get that? And, and I would like to have an explanation of what the legal fees were for um, and what the Briarbush project is. Uh, Mr. Strother actually did answer me, and I got that information. The litigation, for instance, um, again, I'm opposed to Commissioner Klein using a township attorney. If any of those costs are related there, I want to know that, okay? He, he is using it as a contractor, not as a commissioner. Um, Mr. Sanchez and Mr. Spiegelman again showed how when I say something here, there is no opportunity to correct it when they say that what I said was wrong and they don't know. You don't know what residents I've been speaking to. You haven't spoken to all the residents because I did just speak to residents who were upset about that, Mr. Sanchez. So you have something that you, you, have something that you need to learn about how to make this township work for the residents, okay? having you stand up there and say the residents are fine and by the way that was in the planning commission meetings for mr hecker that the residents were all thought it was a great project i never said that Mr. no Lewis. i didn't say you so said I that i said it was i said it was in the planning commission meeting okay they reported that the residents were all in favor so when something needs to be corrected it simply can politely be corrected but that kind of behavior can't get fixed when you don't allow it to be responded to. The amount of the, f the fire tax credit, 
there should have been no fire tax credit passed without an amount assessed to it. I've been trying to get that amount. I hope I will get that amount from yourself, Commissioner Luker, from the manager, from somewhere. We just passed something that may have a $220,000 price tag on it every year, and nobody brought that up. I'm the amount of the minutes. high school permit. That's what I mean, your three minutes are. Okay, can I just say the amount of the high school permit waiver was brought up as an $11,000 and you know, 10,000 escrow and 1,000 down, but that's a $90 million project. That is as much as a million or a million and a half possibly that you are wavering. That's not acceptable. And I, and I spoke to you before about how that's used as, as walking around money. It's not acceptable. Okay, your three minutes are up and we're going past that. Okay, and Mr. Mellon's points about OSHA were correct. Nobody has asked me about the victims <clears throat> in a month of mentioning that. Not one person has asked me about the victims that needed help. Thank you for your comments. Any other comments from the public? Uh, you've already spoke once, ma'am. Can, can I just, okay. I just like to rebuttal, that's all. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Rebuttal what? <laughs> no, 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 you can't because oh, we've, we've, but we haven't allowed other people to do it, so. I, I, I understand, just, but just it, knowing that makes us very happy. Uh, yeah. No, if if we allow you, then it'll come back to haunt us later. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me. Okay. Um, we, we know how you feel. Okay. <laughs> All right. That concludes our uh, formal agenda. Ma'am, please. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, at this time, before we ask for closing comments from the uh, commissioners, um, I'd like to make a uh, closing uh, presentation, if I could, and I would ask uh, Commissioner Peggy Myers to join me uh, and ask Commissioner Tom Farron and Steve Kalinowski to come to the front of the, uh, the room, please. Beyond her control. Uh, I just wanted to take a moment to thank the two gentlemen standing here to my right on behalf of the entire Board of Commissioners and myself personally, uh, two of our colleagues who will be leaving us very shortly. Commissioner Stephen Kalinowski has served the board for five years, and Commissioner Tom Farron has served for four years. Both of these gentlemen served admirably never backing down from a challenge or a request from me for their help on a board-related issue. Perhaps we always did not agree, but we agreed to disagree, never losing respect for one another. Gentlemen, my personal thanks to you both for your service to the township and your constituents, and also to your families for all they endured during your years of service. I know you, Tom, will appreciate that. <laughs> this young man brought his children to many of our meetings, and he be, they behaved probably better than the commissioners. They were, <laughs> they were really great. So on behalf of the township, I have a proclamation that states, whereas Tom J. Farron Sr. was first sworn into the office of township commissioner for Ward 12 on 28th of January, 2013, and then again on the 6th day of January 24, 2014, and whereas Mr. Farron has served as a member of the Public Affairs, Public Safety, and School Committees, and served as the Assistant Director on the Public Works and Public Affairs Committee, and whereas Township Commissioner Farron has represented the people of Ward 12 with distinction and considered all citizens in his deliberations. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed this 14th day of December 2017 that Thomas J. Farron Sr. be remembered 
for his many accomplishments and achievements and for serving the people of the Township of Abington with honor and integrity and is therefore recognized by this formal expression of gratitude and thanks by the Township Board of Commissioners of the Township of Abington. Tom, thank you. Thank you. I'm going to try. <laughs> I think after tonight's meeting, it made it a little easier to leave. <laughs> Maybe. Um, I'm, I'm not going to read this plaque because the wording is very similar that, that, that has just been read. But I would like to say, I can do this. You can do it. I can do it. I have seen you grow as a commissioner from when you started in 2012 till now in an amazing way. You are a community leader. You will continue to be a community leader and your contribution to this township that you love so much and we have talked about so many times will never end. You are our friend now and forever and we love you. Say a few words. Thank you, guys. Hey, it's been an honor working with every one of you, each and every, each and every one of you. You know, there are times we disagreed, but you would call me the next day and we'd have a good conversation about what we disagreed about at that time. Um, I won't stop being Abington. I won't stop being a part of all you guys' life. You're going to see me again. Um, I stay involved in my community. I'd like to thank my residents for giving me the opportunity to serve them for five years. You guys for giving me the opportunity to work and grow and learn from every one of you something different you gave to me that I'll take with me the rest of my life and wherever my life travels, I'll always be Abington. Thank you. I was actually so worried about the presentations earlier tonight, even knowing this was my last meeting, I didn't really plan anything to say. Um, I actually started working as a commissioner because I went to a meeting about the local civic association. They were stepping down the leadership and they wanted some people to show up and I showed up and after a couple of subsequent conversations, the previous commissioner asked me if I wanted to serve in a different capacity to, to support the neighborhood um, and suggested that I consider being a commissioner. And that's been the way I've perceived the role the entire time, is to give back to the neighborhood, to give back to the community. And, you know, Commissioner DiPlacido always says, drive like your kids live here, and that's kind of how I've tried to operate. Everything I've done has been because I live there and because I, I'm dedicated to the community. Um, so the only thing I really have to say to echo Commissioner Kalinowski is thank you. To, to every, every head of, of office here, every assistant head of office, every person to whom I've thanked over the years. I hope you realize the deep appreciation. It's never been anything but sincere. The work I've done, the work we do can't happen without you. And, and I uh, thank you. It doesn't really encapsulate, but I hope you understand the words behind that, especially Terry tonight, for all the support. It, it's amazing the work that gets done here, and it's, it's an honor to be a part of it. To each of the commissioners, you know, I could, I go back to Commissioner Zappone, who was my coach uh, when I was a little kid, uh, not to date him or age him. Um, <laughs> because I would, I would consider myself still young. Um, but when, whether as a soccer player or here in, on the board, um, he's challenged me and he supported me, and, and I think that's been the most important role that I've been able to perceive in the relationship we've had. Um, and I see that in all of us and, and everybody up here. You can have conversations a day after and appreciate the, the work. Uh, we don't have to agree because at the end of the day, we're all fighting for the same thing. We want Abington to be the best township that it can be. And whether we agree in here or we, we disagree, 
in here as long as we get to the, the next step that's going to support our community, support our residents, and support who we are and what we want to be. I think that's the goal here, and I think we can all agree on that. So thank you to everybody tonight for your support. Um, thank you, President Luca, for your ongoing support. Uh, and probably very much like Commissioner Kalinowski, you're not going to see me disappear off the face of the earth. Thank you. Thank you to both of those gentlemen. So at this time, we'll start with uh, Commissioner DiPlacido for closing comments from the commissioners. Thank you, President Luker. Uh, Commissioner Farron, it's been a pleasure being your seat neighbor for four years. Um, and Commissioner Kalinowski, I'll see you tomorrow night. And I'll see everyone else on Saturday night between four and six at the McKinley Firehouse. Although we've sold out of all of our Christmas trees, Santa is still coming, and so please join us for, uh, you know, the normal stuff, cookies, treats, uh, Commissioner Rothman trying to make hot cocoa, and, uh, and tons of other things, all right? And also, when driving through Abington Township, please drive like your kids live here. Thank you. Commissioner Farron. All right, round two. So, <laughs> no, I just want to remind people tomorrow is our blood drive. Um, the Just Fight Foundation is having their blood drive tomorrow. I'm going to be there. I think um, a lot of us will wind up being there. And I think, again, it speaks to the great support we have on the board. Uh, it's so vitally important to help save lives. So I'm going to ask you to, it's at the, um, the VFW, and Commissioner Kanas, remember the time is offhand, it's three to six. Three to eight. Three to eight, thank you. Um, three to eight at the VFW. Um, Again, another great opportunity to show our commitment and dedication to not just our community, but to those outside of our community who need our, our help. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Gillespie. Uh, sure, I wanted to say uh, we'll miss you both, okay? But we know you're out there working for Abington, and that's good. And uh, really, just everybody have a Merry Christmas and a Happy Holiday. Thank you, Commissioner. <coughs> thank you, President Luker. Um, wanted to take one final moment to uh, thank and congratulate the township manager, Kevin, Jeanette, and all of the department heads here. Um, I'm very proud of the budget we passed here earlier this evening, and I think it's the result of a lot of good work of a lot of people, many of whom are here tonight, and I think it sets the path forward for us to main maintain the fiscal stability here in the township, and so I'm grateful for those efforts. Um, I also wanted to take a moment to thank Tom and Stephen uh, for the opportunity to work with you each over the last four years. Um, it can get silly in here at times uh, for, for reasons that are both good and bad. Um, and what I've appreciated in both of you is your candor and your ability to talk through <coughs> issues as they arise so that we can keep our focus on what's important and what's not. And um, I'll miss the both of you in that regard. Thank so you. thank you both. And finally, um, Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, and Happy New Year to everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Kalinowski. Yeah, thanks. Um, oh, I was up there speaking. I, I forgot. I'd turn around and look at the staff that's sitting here, from Rich Manfredi to, you know, Michael Clark and his staff and the staff that sits back there. And I guess I have a story to tell about every one of you that I've could or uh, something, you know. I, I, and the staff is always here for us, and that is so great. I was at an NFC East championship two years ago in North Carolina, and the snowstorm was here, and I was able to call Ed Michelo at a situation, and Ed took care of that, and the resident said, how do you do that? I said, I don't do that. I said, the staff does it, and you guys are just amazing. Don't change the police department. You guys are my friends. You know that for life, and we'll work continually together. You guys, I can't say enough. I'm honored to have worked with you. I'm honored to be a part of your lives. We'll always know each other. No matter where we run into each other, we will run into each other again. Um, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Thank you. Commissioner Klein. Thank you, President Luger. Um, first off, I'd like to tell um, Washington Lane is now paved. Thank God. Um, <laughs> it has been a long road, and I wanted to uh, make special note of thanking Tim Clark, uh, the manager. We've had several meetings with um, Pico and Aqua and trying to push them to finish. And uh, thank God it's, um, I may need a new alignment and some new tires, but Washington Lane is now paved. Um, lo look forward to more utility work. Uh, but switching gears, I wanted to um, express my gratitude to 
Commissioner Farron, Commissioner Kalinowski. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that. You're chirping in my ear. <laughs> no comments in the back. So, um, but it has truly been a pleasure to work with both of you. Um, as you both mentioned, um, differences occur, uh, but I've uh, prided myself on having open communications with both of you and uh, look forward to continuing having conversations with both of you about township business and, and how the township could be uh, improved and continue to move forward. Um, I, and I also hopefully will continue to have a friendship with both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Zappone. Thank you. <clears throat> First of all, the Arsley Community Association's Christmas tree lighting ceremony was a huge success. We had over 500 residents attending. Uh, the second thing I have is this Sunday, the Arts and Community Association will be hosting its sixth annual Breakfast with Santa, held at the North Penn VFW from 8 to 11 a.m. And the last thing is the Arts Community Association will be host hosting its first annual New Year's Eve party at the North Penn VFW from 8 p.m. to 1 a.m. We're gonna have a live band, buffet, and drinks. And this event is open to all township residents. So if anybody's interested, they can contact me for tickets. And just in closing, I want to say, Tom was a hell of a soccer player. <laughs> <laughs> and also, Steve, you've always been there since I started this organization seven years ago for Arsley and for us at the Community Association. So I want to thank you very, very much. And uh, we'll see you Sunday at the breakfast. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Spiegelman. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. A uh, little, it's a little, a little news item. Um, on Saturday, uh, December 23rd, Saturday before Christmas, there is going to be a blood drive uh, right next door to here at the Abington Fire Company. Uh, it's 1920 Horace Avenue in Abington. It's 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. And uh, if you go to Red Cross, redcrossblood.org and search for Abington Fire Co., uh, you can uh, you can sign up online to make your uh, your donation. Um, Commissioner Farron, uh, it's, it has been an honor and a pleasure serving, serving with you. You are the epitome of a gentleman and a scholar. And the, the, thoughtful, the, the thoughtful and analytical nature you brought to this board uh, really, really added a great deal. And, and I like you personally. Um, and I have to say, I know my reputation, but you hold the record for the single longest comment I have ever heard up here. That was right before you cast your vote on Bernie's. That was like 10 minutes. It was unbelievable. So no matter what they say about me, you hold that record. Commissioner Kalinowski, uh, people who know me know that this is about the highest compliment I give. You are a man with a very good heart. Thank you. I wish you well, my friend. Um, and to everybody, uh, happy Hanukkah, Merry Christmas, joyous Kwanzaa, happy solstice, wonderful Festivus, and a happy new year to all. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner Sanchez. Thank you, Mr. President. Wanted to congratulate Sergeant Bly on his promotion as sergeant. Um, also wanted to thank everyone who participated in not only the Thanksgiving turkey drive, but also the holiday toy drive. Um, we got a lot of great stuff and uh, gonna make the holidays much better for a lot of people in need in the community. Uh, so I thank everyone and happy holidays on that note too. Uh, to Commissioners Farron and Kalinowski, Tom and Steve, thank you for your service. I know it's, uh, I know personally it's not easy uh, doing this and you guys really excelled at it and did a great job. So thank you, I look forward to Tom. I know I'll see you around Keswick Village events with the kids and Steve, hopefully I'm still allowed to pop back in the kitchen Absolutely. and say hello at the VFW and <laughs> for events and uh, look forward to maintaining our friendships and wish you the best. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Commissioner Rothman. Uh, starting out, uh, I just want to echo the sentiments that have been expressed to uh, the commissioners who uh, were honored this evening. Thank you for your service to the community. I know what it's like to spend so much time away from your family and the sacrifices that are made. And uh, thank you for all the positive work that you did uh, for the township. Uh, one of the things that I always find interesting about the holiday season is how much people seem to get along. Uh, I don't see why we don't do that all year. Uh, people are holding the doors for people. People are wishing them, you know, happy holiday, Merry Christmas, wh whatever, uh, happy Hanukkah. Um, I think that that's a spirit that I try to use in uh, my work as a commissioner, but also something that I, I teach my family. and. Uh, 
I, I think it's a good idea to keep reminding people throughout the holiday season that we can, we can always be better, we can always be more together. Um, I like that about uh, many of the things that we've done as a board, and I really look forward to uh, working with uh, the new commissioners that we have joining us to continue that type of spirit, uh, not worrying about uh, you know, what people look like or, or the way they're registered to vote or anything like that, but just looking to the future and making things good for, uh, for this township. I will not be making hot chocolate at the party uh, this weekend at the McKinley Firehouse. Thank God. Uh, I'm not even sure where that came from because I don't think I've ever been dumb enough to try doing something like that that I'd fail at. So uh, I think there must be some, something that happened that I wasn't part of. Um, but please do come out. It's a, it's a really great event, and there's many of them that, that you hear about uh, all the time from the people up here, um, whether it, it's closer to you to, to go to the events in Ardsley or over in McKinley, please come. Uh, the firefighters uh, do uh, great work uh, in serving the community, but also they're really fun to be with at these events. So come by, uh, have some hot chocolate, and uh, I want to wish everybody a happy new year and happy holiday season. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Peggy Myers. Thank you. Uh, la last night, uh, Commissioner Luker and I had the opportunity to attend a neighborhood meeting at Willow Grove Park Mall uh, and hear about the possible, probable addition of uh, Movie Grill, which is very similar to Movie Tavern in Flower Town. And many, resi many several residents came out um, and asked really good questions and brought up some um, issues. Uh, we had a wonderful dialogue, and I think that we'll be hearing about this development um, a lot more in the new year, in the future. Uh, and I, I thank Commissioner Luker for allowing me to also be a part of that. Tom, it's been a pleasure. Um, I wish you the best, and I know that I'll see you much in the future. Um, this, this has really been very nice to get to know you. I may not have ever met you otherwise, so um, I, I do appreciate that. And Steve, we were friends long before this, and we will be friends long after this, and you are in my life. Thank you. Commissioner Klosky. Klosky. Thank you, Mr. President. Several things. Number one, actually, that was a very good meeting for last night at the Willow Grove Mall. I was also in attendance, and I think that's an interesting project that they intend to put there. So several other things I wanted to mention just as we roll to the end of the year. So first of all, I want to go back a couple weeks and acknowledge both Chief, Living, Chief Livingood and also Designate Chief Malloy. We had an event over at Holy Redeemer Hospital. Uh, they were celebrating and honoring the Abington Police Department. It was a great event. Mr. Manfredi was there also, and we had a really nice time. And I want to appreciate the fact that they did honor the Chief and Chief Designate. Also, the Abington Police Department was well done, and I think they deserve our support, so thank you for our serv your service in that regard. So as far as my colleagues, Commissioner Farron and Commissioner Kalinowski. Two very brief comments. Although I didn't have a chance to work with you very long, uh, Commissioner Farron, I wish you the best of luck. And you did, you, you did provide me with some insight, which was really good and some professional guidance. And I appreciate that. And I wish you well in what you do in your future. Commissioner Kalinowski, thank you for your openness and willingness to express your ideas and thoughts regarding various ideas that have been before this before this particular board, and that's appreciated. I'm sure your service was appreciated by everybody. Both of you, Commissioner Farron, and Commissioner Kalinowski, good luck in your future. As far as holidays are concerned, so Commissioner Spiegelman stole my thunder because I was going to make a happy festivist comment. He stole my thunder, but it's okay. It's Pizza good. Strike. Pizza strike. Pizza strike. your grievances. And the airing of the grievances. But we want to wish everybody both a happy and healthy holiday season, happy and healthy new year, happy Hanukkah, and we wish everybody well for the new coming year. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Shiver. Thank you very much. I want to announce uh, the Roslyn Valley Holiday Celebration is this Saturday. Um, it is a joint effort between CAPT and the township and our Roslyn Valley Business Association. Ed Miklo's out there in the audience, but you're not on camera, but he does a fine job with that. Uh, Santa is coming at 2.30. 
Yes, mm -hmm. 2.30. And it shows the magic of Santa because Santa's going to be a McKinley that day, going to be an Ardsley the next day. He really can fly, so it's a wonderful thing. We also have Deck the Dogs at 2 p.m., so bring your festival, uh, festive dogs all dressed up to win a possible prize. And we'll have food and drink, and it'll be a good time for everybody. And the, I mean, in closing, I want to say, I don't know if everybody knows this about you, Tom, but Tom is also a novelist. And so one of the first conversations we had was about his book, and he was kind enough to give me the book. And it was quite good. A little, you, We've heard how many hats he wears here, but he also wrote a spy novel. So very good. And um, I enjoyed it quite a bit. I did read the book, and it is quite entertaining. Yeah. And, um, so, and uh, it'll, it's been nice getting to know you over the years. And Steve, we've spent a lot of time on a lot of different projects together, and I'm sure we will in the future as well. The lunch program we worked on together and some different things, and mm -hmm. I think we both always, and you know what, and you used to sit next to me too, and then you moved, we stopped sharing candy, so that yeah. was <laughs> too. So, um, we love animals. And we love animals. Yeah. Yes, we both oh, love animals. She has to break oh. candy. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'm sure I'll continue to see both of you and have happy holidays. Happy holidays to the staff and to everybody watching. Thank you. I'll close by saying first I'll thank uh, on the heels of what Commissioner Hecker said, uh, Mr. Richard Manfredi, Kevin, and Jeanette, and staff for a fantastic job and working diligently on the budget. Uh, you made it very easy for the whole board here to operate this last month, and it's a, a wonderful gift for all of us. Um, I want to give special thanks to Tim Clark of staff for his tenacious handling of a subcontractor's lackadaisical attitude <laughs> on a county job that was being done in the township recently. Uh, I never saw that side of Tim, but he's a little pit bull when he wants to be. Uh, <laughs> follows in your footsteps, Ed. Uh, many thanks to Angelo of your department, Ed. He, uh, while you were on vacation uh, on a cruise, I believe, uh, Angelo and his crew uh, handled a um, special request from a um, township church on a kind of touchy situation. But nonetheless, uh, I want to thank them for that. And lastly, um, Steve Kalinowski and Tom Farron. It's been a pleasure working with both of you. You are both a class to act. And Tom, you and your wife can lay claim to probably the best kids I've ever seen behave <laughs> in many a years. They're very well, uh, very well raised and very well, uh, very, they're, they're ladies and gentlemen at a young age. So thank you for that. And um, thank you to staff for all your hard work all year. And if there is no further business, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Okay. Thank you for attending.